So this is a run through of the WWDC 2011 keynote. And I haven't watched this in a while, but I thought it would be fun to look back on given the current world situation, the fact that WWDC is all online this year. And this was actually Jobs' last public Apple event because he obviously sadly died later in the year. And this was WWDC in June. He didn't survive. Well, he was alive on the same day as the September event, but then died that night, so he wasn't actually present at the iPhone 4S Thank event. You very much. His last, like, true public appearance was really at a Cupertino town council well, meeting awesome. where Jobs pitched the first designs for their new campus, which is like called Apple Park. So, it was a really interesting time, though, because as you can tell from the crowd reaction, this you know, his health was uh, under scrutiny, and, and thank you for coming so I think there was a general yeah. sense of decline, like but people certainly today. weren't expecting him to, you know, die in, in this year. That, that's just the sad reality of, of the situation. He would resign uh, from CEO so in I'm August, so about two months, um, two months after this. Uh, this is clean that's really funny as well, because you're still in... You know, the land of skeuomorphism. You still have loads of appearances by Forstool and the like, and obviously Forstool would get booted in the following year. And get to help so, here, so, and it to some of our newer he would be gone by and iOS. He would be gone by iOS 7, obviously. So, iOS 6 here. next year was the WC2012 event. Apple that was Forstool's last. To help you. Hurrah. So there's a lot uh, of but this one is actually the introduction around, of iCloud, make use of them. which, you and know, set up a great week here an incredible run of Apple services now, from 2011. We're going to talk about three things today. You know, if the, if the hardware also, is if you think the brain about how this keynote is structured, products, I believe what happens here is, is their soul. a uh, and today we are going to talk he obviously introduces the three operating systems. We got some great stuff you've got Line, you've got iOS 5, and then you've OS got iCloud. Uh, but Jobs only kind of runs the last section, the iCloud section, and um, which is kind of a hint that he, you know, wasn't feeling stuff. the best ahead so, of this event. It was, it was like a rumor Lion. whether Jobs would even be Tell appearing or not. Uh, and I'm if you think backwards, the. He did the iPhone 4 event, that was WWC a year ago. Then that was followed up by a September event, which he was at. Then there was the October Back to the Mac event, which he kind of was... He, he like introduced and he did the MacBook Air section, but a lot of that event is dominated by other speakers, oh, including good morning, everyone. Schiller. How you doing? And then the next year rolled around and it was the March 2011 yeah. iPad 2 event, and, well, and Jobs did the, the full thing. This is the developer conference. And so we will see you know, how That's this goes. Like so this is... The, the lion section and technically this product was pre-announced because in back to the mac the they were already talking about lion features well. Our customer base and this was when lion uh, still cost space. money <laughs> like you didn't um million active mac i think they'll announce in this keynote that the it's it's the fully it's the available in the mac app store for download and so they're abandoning the cd but you still have to pay for it from all things d there's really no other way to say the this. Mac is kicking, the Mac ass. Is kicking ass. No one can innovate, innovate any more my ass, right? Now, that's really nice, but what did John This was mean? a really nice heyday for well, this is what he means. Mac OS. In the last quarter, the PC market actually shrank year over year, 1%. The, the, the Mac's Mac growth in this way continued for many years to come, but I think you can look at this, like, operating system status as quite a and high book, point of, like, Perfection. Now, you think this is an and in fact, a lot of the, the controversial changes the really kind of started with the line release as it Apple integrated so more iOS features. Like, incredible. This like is, the line was the release Air. where they, you know, changed save as to the duplicate option, fast, and the whole PC there are plenty of people that still hate that. Not me, but you know, you know, this is really the kind of the starting point, and people view this as the last release that. Jobs really had an eye on, and even then, there's today. debate about what Jobs was concentrating on. Whether in you his, want you know, a great new last notebook and years. or a killer desktop with the new iMac, these Macs are the best. Also, the other thing that had happened with this event is this was the first the WWC run, where there was no the iPhone announcement. Because up, uh, up till 2011, Apple the did the Apple did like an iOS preview event in the kind of March-April time frame, and then they would release the operating system in June. 
we added to it but also the have the new phone to go along with it like 3GS or the FM4 for. And we built into it but this was the first time that they'd broken that cycle and obviously the FM4S the ends up being released in October and so ahead those of, you who are of the this, this is what keynote they released a statement that was basically like, like years ago when we launched yeah, it. that was basically like we are focusing on you know the next generation operating systems of iOS, Mac uh, of OS X, it was a and iCloud, and, over the last and I think they like seeded to press that Wall Street Journal that you know, this was a no hardware event, and so this was really setting expectations. It's so but crazy to see like the lettering there with how the well, X is, you know, so metallic. Like these kind of treatments on these on these numbers seem so outdated, but at the time they look really modern. Like. Well, this geomorphic era is, time to tell you, about you know, some, I, I, I wish, I still so think there's really a better middle ground than what awesome we have. First like, off, I feel like we went too it. far. One, but some of this stuff where you've got, you know, the metal the reflections that seem the just, they didn't seem very realistic, they just seem very fake. Like, who wants that? But so much has changed over the last It's funny years. seeing the air with the smaller trackpad. Like, and we offer them on our when they did the 2016 iOS as well. MacBook Pro, so the trackpad was just so ginormous at first. And it was like, whoa, the well, you can this have looks, you know, disproportionate. But now you look back and the old trackpad just looks like small. Taps to zoom in on stories or pictures. Wow, pinch you to zoom. You can dynamically zoom with that. beautiful fluid pinch motions. You can swipe through your photographs, your slides, your web pages, all with an incredible physical realism that's never been possible. These little like preview videos, before. they should put them on the iPad for and the Magic Keyboard. Like, the system and a lot of little you can do loads areas. of gestures on that trackpad, but if you go into example. keyboard settings, it's just very plain and doesn't really tell you what you can do. Bars? So, scroll bars there unless so you, you know, you're kind of out of luck. And scroll. But now if you're pushing your window with multi-touch, you don't need them. They can disappear. Kind of a much more okay, so this is when they were when changing scroll, the, the scroll bars. Appear, and again, this is one of the things that had been previewed in the betas from you know, Lion dating them. back to the, to the previous the October. So that was a big a point of discussion way. in the community at the time was, you know, Apple was just getting Number rid of the two. real scroll bars. Now you've got full these like ios ones that appear and disappear. And some full screen applications before, and these are really important for notebooks. I think the scroll bar change was positive. People complained about it, but clearly it's, it's a lot more elegant. And you don't really lose out much functionality now in the world of like multi-touch trackpads and the magic mouse and like scroll wheels. Like iPhoto. Well, now with Lion, we've built in a standard the full method screen, for to create full screen applications. This whole and full screen thing, which obviously control, does still right, the, survive so to this day. Tap, and then bring their applications full I don't know. I don't think it but quite fulfilled full its like potential. Because now you can keep your application running I think what they were going for at, in this phase get back of the feature was to try and make need, like every full screen app look like an iPad app. So like you can see here with iPhone, they have like completely custom Chrome. Like black and black and so metal, which looks completely different to when it was just in the window presentation. Full screen mode of Lion, but they kind of moved away from that, and like I Safari, think full screen Nail, in general has not been ICAL. successful like on on the Mac. Like it's good for very specific use cases, like if you put like your photo library to the side. But I think people just forget that it's there. Even with like Mission Control, putting the buttons at the top, I don't think people really do it that often. Like even normal people, they just you know they use full screen in the sense that they just open one app at a time, but they're not using like the full screen feature. They just have a, a full screen window and they close the window and they open a different one, or they just stack them up and they get lost and they get confused. Like. Here's preview showing you PDF documents running full screen. Whereas the because iPad struggles to transition from full screen only to full screen a multitasking experience, I think the Mac struggled the to feature. do the For reverse. Many users, be the best feature of Lion. I believe it's in this version control. of now, we all like to run a lot of Mac OS in Lion, the full screen apps wouldn't even work when you Expose would plug into external displays. So if you had three displays, you'd only see the full screen app on one of them, and the other two would just be like this gray linen texture. And so they didn't even really take now, advantage of the platform very well. This mission control UI has basically survived unchanged all the way through to present day. I think it was a really good execution. The only thing they really changed was that the you don't get the gray linen texture when they strip that with Yosemite and so the wallpaper is now just full screen but the layout of all the, the little thumbnails at the top is the same you get the same layout of expose and all of like the random gestures are still identical the FaceTime app is being shown here because 
it was built into Lion, so whereas before they released it and you had to what pay like to do now is before a dollar for it in the Mac App Store. Come up and, give you a demo of these three new features, all and the Mac App Store's correct? kind of rolled in as a Lion feature, right. but they did ship that for Snow Leopard. So, Here's Craig. At Lion in action. You know, the new superstar, the new rock star of WTC Kinos. In the Back to the Mac event, he was, you know, visibly shaking and pretty notice, lacking in confidence. Is that I wouldn't say he's like on top form this in this no one, but you know, he clearly has improved really by a mile. I'm sure Apple gave him a lot of coaching. Because we can simply push the content with our fingers, if you look carefully, you can still see his fingers are like shaking a little bit, but he doesn't mess up the gestures as much. That's probably just because the trackpads are a lot more forgiven than the Magic Mouse, which is what he was using for the Back to the Mac event. And fluidly zoom, just like that. Zoom out, and you get a nice little bounce. I do kind of miss the if I want to smart zoom, I just the nicer like 3D dog like smart zooms in. Double tap the, the, ref all, the, the excessive out. reflections now, are kind of, you know, really cool I could, I could drop them, but I think they could have done like a, drill into a story. like a lightly shadowed, Reddit, like just metallic dock that was at that angle, well, now, instead of what they have now, which is just like fingers, a 2D rectangle with rounded corners. Right off to the side and return back to my previous page. If I want to get back, this like swipe back, swipe, swipe forward back, thing, I swear like every other Mac OS release, they just make it like break so it always reloads the page, like you never get it this smooth. I don't know if it's because of ads loading or extensions. Stuff just seems to get in the way, and it, it just feels like you swipe back and then you have to like wait like half a minute. Screen apps. I'm gonna launch iPhoto here, and you can see that iPhoto has adopted Lion's standard new full screen. Also, this like demo structure here, where you saw Shiller like present this feature and even show these screenshots already, and now you get. Federighi to demo it. To this is very common back in the day in the in the Jobs era. Like there was a lot of repetition. You'd have slides. You'd explain the feature. You'd then have a demo, which basically shows the same feature again. And then you'd even, in some cases, have a wrap up where they just like bullet pointed back through everything they just said. More modern Apple events have kind of like dropped that repetition, mostly because of time. Like they just have so many more products to discuss these days that they don't really have the time to be this like casual about it. And of course, iPhoto's still there in full Like, modern well. WWCs, you know, they're hardly taking Safari breath. It's just like, feature, 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 demo, demo, demo. And most of the content. demos they do but if I want to get my are demos of things they haven't, you know, mentioned in the slides. Or in the slides, they just showed, like, the name of the really feature nice. and, like, three bullet points. But they don't really show you, screen, you know, the, right they there don't drill it into you with screenshot after screenshot after screenshot. They just save it for the demonstration. Let's take a look now at Photo Booth. This is an app absolutely born. To run in full screen. The modern Apple experience, the go-to demo the is an AR game. game. Here, in the olden days, it was the new photo booth effects. So here's your. Effects. So notice as I move. Here's your photo booth. This is like track. Snapchat, but three years earlier without social. That's right. It's the most important feature in Lion, and. We can also use this face tracking And like here, the skewo, perform some targeted facial the skewo like curtains at the instance, side. I can finally have maybe they could have, like in the modern era, maybe they could tone down some of the texture and some of the like, like the glowing camera buttons so quite extreme, but pretty cool. I think so they could still have around. stuff like the curtains just yeah, sitting there. Like they weren't doing any so, harm, right? They weren't, they weren't gonna use that space for anything else. It's just, you know, a bit of visual decoration. Nowadays, everything's just so much more like plain and kind of boring. that often means that they have a lot of windows. In fact, my desktop often looks a little bit more like this, right? I've got a lot going on. So how do I get across all of those different activities? Well, I just take three fingers, swipe up on the trackpad, and I'm in I'm mission, mission control. control. From here, I can get it any window I want. So if I want to get it, I can like with I the click, iCal app there, you can forward, see. Sweep back into mission control. You know, drop the over to the little like paper, the torn edges thing. of the paper, Across and you can probably top, drop the see, stitching. My but desktop, you know, a colored a colored so toolbar and like the orangey hues of the leather. Forward, I think that'd be fine instead of just going straight back up, to full metal. Back in mission control, which is obviously what we have. I can also quick look my windows if I just hit space bar here, get a better look at my calendar. Or take this pile of preview windows. And I literally never spread. With a little there, you just up. like click on the window you want. You know that's just really one of the things that kind of looks cool, but you never remember to do it. Spaces are now integrated right into Mission Control. Just take my mouse up to the corner of the screen, and a little space pops up. A good click, kind of indicator for how well UI is designed space. is whether it does really like stand the test of time and doesn't get iterated on over and over again. And you know, most these interactions. 
Oh, in. Macro X today, as they always were. Really useful. I can swipe through the spaces, of course, here in, uh, in Mission Control, go over to my desktop, and if I want to then take even an entire app and all of its windows and create a huh. space for that, I can click on the preview icon. That's pretty neat. I don't actually think I knew that. You just, I've just hold the app icon? Space. I guess because the app icon doesn't like glow up or light up or anything. It's not really indicating that it's create. clickable. I just click, but apparently you can do delete, that. And they fl windows fly right back to my original desktop space. So that is mission control. Thank you very All much. of these just like window animations generally is what made Mac OS so cool compared to Windows, right? Like Windows would do Thank most of these features, but they just wouldn't be very pretty. And now work as you see with a Mac, you can just like click on things, close things, everything just like smoothly flows and scales back into place. Next up, the Mac App Store. We launched the Mac App Store. The Mac App Store has had a storied history. Like best place to purchase and sandboxing is kind of. Now for years, there they want to bring the iOS app store experience to macOS, but and they all work kind of the same way. like you the macOS legacy just has so many more much capable, more capable applications that, that you, you know, Apple's home, security models and Apple's feature models don't really support no if you're going through a sandbox experience, so you still have this kind of like fragmented right world. Of your own home on your Mac. And in the last six months, I also think there's this funny phenomenon with normal people where they'll have used an iPhone for ages and they'll get their first like MacBook. And then they'll That's click incredible. on the app store and they'll just start searching for things like, you know, Facebook and Twitter Passive, and Best Buy, like they'll just try and look for it. They'll just expect and the that corresponding board, apps the on the app desktop for every single thing, success, even too. though, for example, you know, you're really much like use the web experience. They Twitter added, uh, finally got its native app back through the Palace version, store, but you shouldn't use it. But in general, it's like, Interactive has brought a host you know, people of kind of spend their time in Safari a lot of the time, ninjas. or in Chrome, or whatever Hopefully your browser is, and the app store is kind of secondary. I mean, the Mac App Store is great, like, app store. in terms of the experience, the small, when you download something and you don't want it anymore, you can just delete it, and you don't have to worry about you know, preferences far as going there front and center. And it's still kind of terrible, like, when you do have to actually just get a different Mac app that you've downloaded from a website, and then, you know, it downloads as this, like, DMG, disk image, that you don't have to double click on, then you have to drag the thing out, then you have to double click on, maybe it's got its own installer. Like, that whole features for you that whole garbage is just, Some of them you're used to from the it's kind of sad that that is still a thing. Like I mean, I know it's in. technically, the technical reasons why it is, but Push you can imagine you if you're like a new Mac user, you can make your like Windows, like that's somewhere where Windows definitely is better because you download a program from on, on, on Windows, for users, you double click on it, it installs. But on Mac OS, this kind of like paradigm is updates. what you're downloading is just like the disk image that gets mounted, then you have to drag it out of the disk image. So if, you can, if it's just a, 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 raw, a raw application, you can actually launch the application about. inside the disk image and forget to move it out. Like all of that complexity is something that doesn't really exist on Windows. Wouldn't it be great? It's just kind of like a rough edge of Mac OS that Apple has fixed with the App Store, but you, can, you know, not all software can live in the app store, so you have the same problem. Well, now you can. With Launchpad, you simply make a simple gesture. Launchpad. And all your applications fly onto your Launchpad no hasn't, they are in your like, Launchpad looks Launchpad the same today, are. but I wouldn't say, so, with this with Mission Control, it, like, survived the test of the time. I think Launchpad's just kind of, like, falling into disrepair and disuse. Like, I don't think professional users use Launchpad. I don't think normal users use Launchpad either. Like, it just doesn't, doesn't have enough organization. When you download so a new app, it kind of just puts it in Launchpad that you know where to put it. Like, nobody uses Next. it. What they really need is an option Resume. so that if you go to your desktop, you see idea. your Launchpad apps computer, rather than, like, files you and folders. Because making back, it like an you're app that you click on or you do, point. like, the pinch gesture, your, it just you have no never more gets used. Open, your aren't open. You have no more windows open. Your documents aren't open. You usually have to pick a template. Why can't applications get you back to work quickly? Well, that's Resume. what Resume does. Now, when you launch an application in Lion, it brings you right back to where you were when you quit. It remembers what documents you were open. Hmm. It remembers the text that was selected in the document. It remembers where the palette This is part of the their initiative, of like back to the Mac, right? Taking the iOS experience, which is a lot better state restoration, and doing that for so the Mac next applications time you have to as well. Shut down and restart your your Mac for a reason. Maybe you I don't know, like new software and ask you to reboot. A lot of the time, when it asks me, do I want to restore my Windows? I'm just well, saying no. Like I feel like window, it never quite gets it right, or especially with multiple Windows or multiple desktops. Like if you have an external monitor and the integrated screen on the laptop, you can never really count on it to restore it just right. Like the Windows just fly everywhere. So you're almost still kind of relying on you know manual spring cleaning. Like when you're finished with something. 
you save it, you close it, right? Like, from the beginning of using auto save, we've all had to auto save exists, really but fact. you never want to trust save, it. Save and all your work as you're going. Whether it's file like, I, I can never be 100% sure save. that if I close this window on this document that it's actually going to be saved without me to press save. You so, you know, you, you just end up pressing save like as a placebo 20 Why times a minute. Why can't the computer command S, command S, command S. Well, that's what Lion does. As you're creating a document, Lion can automatically save it in the background without you having to do anything, without you having to see anything. It's funny, or like, just being watching this, you. how many of these so things we do really take for granted in the modern era. Thing, like, but, then, but as we got into it, we found there's more things we can do for you since we're auto-saving. Like, wow, you can always save. So if you zoom in on the title bar of your documents, you'll see the name of your document is actually a menu now that you can tap on. Right. And take advantage of the power Here. of auto-save. Well, for example, let's the say browser you're versions work, thing. And you don't like the work you did, and you're I worried that you auto saved over what you liked that you'd done previously. I tried and it a few times. Revert to last open, and, and it back never really has the started. versioning that I want, or it has no version at all. Exactly what you want. You don't so want you it to ever get auto saved over it. it again because it's perfect the way it is. You can just like especially in the modern world of iCloud Drive, it's like a you should just have like perfect version history on like all of these documents. You can even write from within the application. And, you sh and there should be some UI and in the Finder for just seeing just previous like versions, comparing them, version. so you putting have them the back together. All of this, and then if you actually delete something, you should be able to find recently deleted in now, the Mac Finder, not like have to go to iCloud.com, sign in, go to that random list, scroll all the way down and restore a file. So like, you're on a document, you're they added shared text, folders in Catalina, copy, but there's still some like fundamental features of the iCloud Drive experience that aren't exposed in Mac OS. In fact, it's saving all these versions of your document as you're working. So we call that look versions. At that. <laughs> look at that it's icon, automatic. that is. You don't have to do anything. Like we'll do it for you with Lion. If you love something in a split second, you can, of course, you got that a heavy wood grain, the reflections. We only store the difference between the versions. They're not whole new documents. Again, though, an icon like that, and you don't have to worry I think, could fit in the modern era else, if you just, that they're gonna get all that you know, if you replace the, the wood grain with just, like, when a flat color off, with a slight gradient on it, email, we only send everything else is version. not super offensive. So just tone down the reflections a little bit. Auto save and versions. Well, again, go back to that menu on the top. And there's another choice there that you may have noticed. Browse all versions. The pace is definitely, I think, the thing that strikes me the most interface. watching this it compared to like time machine. modern keynotes. But rather like, than being about your whole system, it's about that one document you're working on. On the we, left in, is the current version. You know, WWE the right, 2019, the they're barely taking breaths. Like here, it's like lazily like walking through everything, repeating things, and they're all live. saying it again. Yeah, we get the idea. The like, one, you can even they would have they would have said them. versions in about so 10 seconds if like it was a modern feature. Just because they have so much more to talk about. Like, they have WatchOS, they have PVOS stuff. If they have services updates, we will fit them in as well. iOS, I feel like iOS feature set. Let's let's start. There's just always more, that. like, you, see, it's an icon you know, right I think this is probably the, the time when Mac OS is really getting, like, meaningful new features every every single the generation. They kind of slowed down installed. when they took Mac OS from Mountain Lion to the uh, once a when year update approach. Like, like, you get, like, one or two features, and then everything is just, just kind of, like, gravy or compatibility with iOS. But the OS sections now are so much more rich and fuller than what they had back in these days. Like, iOS is still pretty immature at this time. I can't remember exactly what Mac was in five. I guess I iMessage right in and stuff, and oh, and the See, and the, the PC free stuff. So that was quite big. But I bet if you actually watch when it comes up to the iOS section, you'd be like, wow, there wasn't actually that, that much there. Apps. So then if you like literally a year ago with iOS 4, one, Mac, you want to one of the, the flagship one, features of iOS 4 was that you could set no your wallpaper. Like that's kind of the level where course, we were at. Updates. And multitasking, the first version of multitasking with iOS 4 as well. So on your system from the App Store, up to date. Well, now, like let's, this, uh, this would never happen. To our Mac. This We're gonna click clicking here, on an app, Twitter watching it download. Page. This just wouldn't happen in the normal world. The animation was cool. They didn't do that anymore. It lifts up out of the app store and flies right into my launch pad, downloads, and is ready to use. I remember here, originally on, on Lion, when you download from the Mac App Store, it would move it, maybe fly directly page, into the dock. So it would like folder, force add the application to your folder, dock, and that felt really offensive. So they obviously changed that by the time it came out. Drop it, and I've created a folder just like that in Launchpad. Next, just I'd like to show fantastic. you just how fantastic the Mac is now with Lion and working Again, with like documents. I'm going to open a document crazy that I've been working on here on the history of guitars. When I start editing a document, often I'll position my windows just the way I like them, like this, maybe open up some inspectors, position them the way I want them. And Federighi definitely 
Now, He's doing this good, guitar, though. This, uh, looks he doesn't quite have the charisma or, like, audience, or the hilarity that. that he develops, but take, he, uh, take you know, he, he's aside. clearly been coached to be much more stage confident this, than uh, the Back to the Mac event. So I'm done with my edits for now, and I'm going to quit, and I want you to watch what happens when I quit. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I wasn't prompted to save. I didn't need to be because Lion was actually saving for me all along. But it wasn't just the reflections in that dot really are offensive. It was like, exactly the you have a kind of S-shaped reflection so from the world, and you have per you see, app icon reflections as well. Like, just the way they were. And, and you have window reflections. If you dread the window down, there, they'll get reflected and too. And it's kind of like an overload, just right? There's just so much stuff Perfect that can be reflected back and forth. We're not just storing so that, the, the removing and stripping down of that kind of stuff, I definitely welcome, and I like. But so if I want to go back, maybe I regret these edits. I want to get back to the There are the cases version. where you just see like this entire screen, and, and it's just all completely flat on iOS, and you're like, right really, you can put a shadow here anywhere? You can put like a slight bit of texture version on the left, and the history on the right. If I want this previous version to become current, again, all of this stuff I never count on actually working. Flies on top and becomes the current. I don't know if you like. I use Time Machine over Synology, so maybe if you had like that, I'll go back a normal Time Machine experience, here. this actually does work properly, actually but have a full time, time Machine here. Restoration, the Starry, you know, Stargaze view, with the Synology box running, the backups, so it never, it just doesn't load, like, when I restore a definitely document, not to the speed and efficiency of what we're seeing here, really you have to like go back and then you wait like 30 minutes for the older version to actually update to show you what it is. Bring it into the current version. With versions, I can, because these two windows are actually live here. So if I have on this interface version, is really nice, and they should probably like bring really something like this to the, the iPad. Like in the Files app, this past version, I see, oh, look, there's, there's a with iCloud documents that have perfect. you know proper version so history. Select the guitar in the old version. They should have an interface it, like this where you see like your current one on the left, and you can scroll right back through the, the others, version, and you can and like you know, bring adjustments if you want. Right now on Files and iOS, it's kind of like. If you can do any version restoration, thanks. it's just like all or nothing. Like you, you pick a, you pick an older file by the date that it was made, you, and Craig. then it just replaces the current one. You don't Next, get like the side by side comparison. You don't get the, well, you know, the option to kind of preview it. It's just kind of you have to commit. Airdrop is new with this release. That's, that that's cool. Than ever. It's called Airdrop. Like I said, You've the 2011 keynote has a lot of like fundamental things that you a big like platform advantage nowadays. No one's done better than. Is good old sneaker net. Copy it off of one, walk over to your friend's computer, copy it back on. Well, Lion solves that. With and this technology. year, right, AirDrop. they added AirDrop to Mac OS, but network. it wasn't so it an work? iOS feature until iOS 7. When you go to the Finder in Lion, you'll see on the sources on the left a new choice called AirDrop. You tap it, you get a new display inside the Finder. What you see so you'd is have yourself. Like Center, two generations, right and the people around you who are you'd have also iOS 5 and iOS 6 that wouldn't time. have AirDrop. You see their pictures. Despite the Mac, I want to drag a, a document over to Shauna's computer. I just drag the document on top of are her sure picture and it asks me, Are you sure you want to send this? And I confirm it's funny they have a remote on disk Shauna's in the sidebar. Like, she's also now running it was AirDrop. still in the time frame she of sees, pops up over my picture because the, the 2010 MacBook Air was still like new. That was the, you know, and the big thing was that was they dropped on the media. So it's a peer -to -peer and so they were still network. kind of in this era of disk-based installation and, you know, you buy software packaged in a box. Like Your data's protected I'm over the air. Pretty sure Lime was, yeah, because Lime was the first release to be available so through the Mac drop. App Store because you could upgrade from Snap to the Mac App Store. To number 10. So the, bo the, like, the box software thing was still a real phenomenon that time. So number 10 <laughs> even is when they're trying to push forward in these screenshots, Lime. they make sure it's to like beautiful. feature the remote disk feature. The layout feature. on it is incredible. It works in a window. It takes advantage of full screen. You can work in a two column, or if you want to have access to your mail sources, a three column view right there on the left. And you see that the design of it's really optimized around mail. reading your mail. I have a beautiful full height message. I use mail. On the left, in like the Apple message mail. list, you see snippets like we're used to from iOS. I now think it could be slightly better. Like, I don't you hate it. The, top, you have a the biggest bar. problem with mail so is that does. if it now has, it has an error loading a mailbox, like it will force itself to the front. Quickly. So you can have like a full screen video Part going on, one of the most powerful and then if Mail has a like a temporary network problem where it can't connect to you know the Gmail server, it will tell you by like, Making the window foreground, and if you're in full subject, screen, it means splitting that in two, and have. then it has this little error message that goes away. And it's like, great, now I've got to close mail down again. It's like, why can't you just 
can become yeah, bounce, call a search bounce the dock icon and just do nothing at all. search token where you can set some parameters on it. Boolean you can have more than it. one create Boolean searches if you want. But probably the best feature of the new mail is something we call, oh, yes, you can love that, it's okay, Boolean searches. They don't let you do that on iOS, right? Like. Probably the best feature is something we call conversation view. In mail today, as you've got a they give you the suggestions, going, you've but got some messages you've responded to or replied. And like in forward. iOS 13 you photos, longer, longer, you have those like little tokens that you can like build up a search from. You know, this and this and this. Follow the flow of this and appreciate they should the make that more like platform sent. wide. So well, now, you can actually do it line, on mail on iPhone and iPad. View. Like those kind of features are the things that turn iPad OS into like a proper desktop computer in a print system messages, rather than just like a scared up version of the phone. And we're still alive, waiting for a lot of that stuff to actually be implemented. View. Yet it's completely compatible with doing email with other people who don't have Lion and can't get the same beautiful view. So that's Mail and Lion. I'd like I mean, to Mail and iOS 13 was. Demo to show off mail. I loved the backstory there. Like they screwed up the toolbar by, okay. you know, stripping it down from the buttons well, and I putting the reply button directly next to the delete mail button mail for no let's, reason, let's just leaving a load of blank space on the left. So it's got this great I'm pretty sure they had features planned, like snoozing and stuff that there was like meant to be in 13, and then it just kind of got cut at the last minute, so they dropped it, and then it just kind of left the app kind of half done. We and for whatever reason, it took them like four the top, point releases so to actually fix it back again. We'll see what happens with iOS 14 from now. That animation was laggy. List, wow. The sidebar? Right you see well. where you just open and close the sidebar there? That was not smooth. I really find the new search to that be just awesome. Good, Apple. Because when I search, I'm often searching for a person, let's say like Phil. I start typing PH. Gotcha. See, it prompts me for people in my uh, mail right now that match. So I go, Phil Schiller, found messages from Phil, just like that. I can use, I can retarget the search to specific inboxes or search all. And of course, as Phil showed you, I can pick whether I'm searching for from, to, or the entire message. Well, suggestions don't just apply to searching for people. They also work for other things as well. Again, like, subject, there would not be trip. as much exposition in you the see modern that's world. actually prompting me, do you want to search for messages that contain trip, or where trip just appears in the subject line, or even suggest specific so subject semi -trip? lines? You're a few years early on that one. So I can select this, and I've done a subject search on trip. What about dates? I'm going to type March, start typing March. There you see it prompts me, March 2011. Like that, I've searched for all my messages in March. Yeah, these t really this tokenization awesome should 100% be ported to, to really iOS. Really quickly to pinpoint just the search you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for a message about that Phil sent me. It's a subject with some like about obviously they they've pre done Schiller, this demo, so they know that the month. you know these three filters are taking me like to the exact that, email I want. But that that combination of filtering, you can do it on the Mac. You can't really achieve it's that really nice. on Apple's apps. Fun. As awesome as that Mobile. is, my favorite feature is conversations. It's this beautiful view. It's funny how like messages that were sent in the conversation messaging is like a thing. Just as they were sent with all the images and so forth. And you'll notice that all of that extra forwarded reply text that's redundant in the conversation is stripped right out. It's gone. But if I want to show it and I want to see mail the way it kind of looks in less <laughs> mail programs, I can click like this. That photo animation's cool. It folds right out. Yeah, this is awesome. Can't remember if they still have that. They should do. And if I want to reply to a particular message in a conversation, I can hover. We get a reply control and watch Bloop. this animation. Bloop. So, <laughs> message hops right out. So that's great. And finally, I think just watching this just reminds me how much that away, iPad mail needs to graduate, be more of a desktop experience. All the messages, put it in your like, folder. They just about gone. gave it a three that's sidebar mail. view. In Lion. Thank you. And the sidebar thing still is like private API, like the, the, the built-in split view controller for iOS, for iPad apps is only so those are the one, top you know, ten two side by side. Mail. The kind of like so, third pane a, from, a lion, has, has so been like three releases now where it's just a private API that's implemented in Mail and Notes and nowhere else. Amazing features, just to bring up a few. Don't, Windows, don't Windows users who want to upgrade to a Mac deserve a migration feature? See look, bottom like right, Mac application sandboxing. Well now there is in Lion, when you upgrade from Windows, we can help you migrate and get to a better computing experience. Uh, there's file vault too. Resize from yes, any edge? Can you not resize a Mac window from a different edge before? More in your hard drive, you have that. FaceTime's built in. Even servers all new with Lion. Server isn't another operating system, it's just a bunch of applications. Yahoo Messenger and iChat, now that dates it to 2011. So amazing depth of features for you. And for all the developers Yahoo out Messenger here, you have over 3,000 new APIs for you to take advantage of the power of Lion. Amazing stuff. You can do all the things we showed here. Coco Alea was new. Okay. So that, for people that don't know, Alea is like the 
a developer view system for making views that can kind of adapt to any screen size or any content. So like if you have a label, which is like type, which is like, um, no more. You know, like document now, chooser. Well, in another language, in the document chooser store. could be longer, it could be shorter, and you can basically set up like, this constraint system to have the views or many layout. out. And that and became, that you know, essential when Apple started moving from, seen. you know, multiple ready, screen sizes with like store, the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, there. and you now they have so many different screen sizes on mobile that you know you can't have manual layout for every single thing. You have to have these you know, these helpers like what layout though. Right a lot of people don't like what layout and Swift so UI uses a different layout store. system. But in general, you know, size, most things are what layout HD these days. Here's what we were saying it about right in place, no the death of physical media. And because Update it's for the first time the through the Mac App Store, Store the Mac App Store rules. Store rules. rules. When you purchase it, you can use it on all of your personal I mean, that was nice. Apps. Like, before, it's kind of incredible. I can't remember a time. I mean, obviously it happened, but That's it just sounds ridiculous that there was a time that not only did you have to pay for Mac OS, you had to pay for it per machine. Well, like, you if you had three computers, past, you had to pay for three times. Most major releases of, of Mac OS 10 have been $129. And I think there's a lot here for $129. What did I say for $29? But we love it so much that we want to make it available to even more people. Twenty nine so ninety nine. Price it at just twenty nine ninety nine. And they made it free, starting with Yosemite, I believe. I was hoping you're gonna like that. So and when it went free, that was, you know, almost like freeing responsibility. Review, like when, when something when something is charged for, you, you have to make sure that you know, it's fit with the standard of quality. And when you make it free, you can have more, you know, loosey goosey wiggle July. room for so very, not having it tip top shape and not having loads of features. So, so I think part of the complaints that people see with Catalina or any other versions of you know, Mac OS recently is that the Next quality control is just not quite there. The whereas, five. you know, if it was Let's like a that, chargeable piece of software, I'd like to invite up I feel Scott like that would much. Because just like innate responsibility differences between giving something away and actually charging for it. Here's four still. Welcome. So I'm here to tell you about iOS 5. And before I get into the cool stuff, let me give you a quick update on iOS. As you know, iOS powers the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod Touch. You don't see the iPod Touch on a slide today, these days. We have sold, wait for it. 200 over million? 200 Unbelievable. million iOS devices. Let me see. Now they sell 200 million a year. And that makes iOS the number one mobile operating system. So this With is 2011, so I guess this is still like the height of the Android you know, of iPhone the war. Like Android was catching market share by the end of by the end of this year. I'm pretty sure now they're the, the equal edition, market the share, and then they took over. Is the iPad 2, but this was a time when like product. It, they, 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 and it was probably like an eight-month period where every two months white, Google or Apple would announce like. It is Act the, the number of da daily activations, and, and it was like this race. It was like 200,000 device it. activations, 250,000 activations per day. And then jobs would be like, we don't think the other guys are counting properly. We think they're counting the upgrades too. We're counting new ones still only. And look away, we've got 300,000. And then, you know, as the smartphone market exploded, those numbers just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And obviously, you had the like, you know, the pattern with Android starting up and. And have sold Apple more than started, you know, raging million. the war of copycatness. Well, joins the iPhone and the iPod Touch. So it's a pretty brutal time in the industry, of but iOS devices. you know, and what we saw was that all those other players there, like well. Rim was on that pie chart, which like is hilarious, just got swallowed up by Android devices. We've already sold and then you had basically the Apple market share stay relatively constant, around 25 to 30% worldwide. Music store. And in the US, obviously nowadays, there, I think it's like 50-50 with Android. This, of course, makes it the number one retailer of music in the world. The iBookstore. Next is the iBookstore. You know, we launched the iBookstore just a little more than a year ago. Already, all six major So the controversy with iBooks was the books random the house wasn't there on day one. They got added, like, it. three or four months later. So now they're recapping the Apple 130 6. Million 130 million books. That's quite a lot. Great. Like, 25 million iPads, 130 million books. And, of course, it's like five books there's the app per store. iPad. Quite a lot. Now, although by this the time they had already put, put the iBooks really to the iPhone as well, 
was that was <laughs> speaking about like major iOS features compared from then and now, like iBooks for iPhone. On the App Store. Go back and, and watch the WWE 2010 event. Jobs talking about iBooks for iPhone for like 10 for minutes. IPad. They take full advantage of the large touchscreen display, and they make the iPad a better product. We'd like to thank our developers. This was def this app. like, this is the big sadness of the iPad is that. Before they started diversifying to multiple screens and split screen multitasking, now our customers you just had our customers you know, one canvas that developers could target directly. They could pixel perfectly lay out the app store. Their, their interfaces to and be just like sublime on this single canvas. And Maybe. so when you had like 90,000 optimized now, apps for iPad, they were like truly like uh, Apple so far perfectly laid out, out with beautiful you know, textures and on augmentation and little augmentation Thank bits you. everywhere and you know richer functionality too but that was like the best time of of ipad app design and since i was seven i don't think we've ever got back to those highs like now everything's just like, like this it's the iphone app but with a sidebar on the planet. side They're and i try and you know do my part games. with like being a machine and stuff where i do I try and offer like properly rich experiences for the bigger screen like sizes but you know, the, the market as a whole just doesn't titles, like doesn't HBO support Go. it. Like it's it's just hard like to code, HBO, it's hard to maintain, and, and you can watch it the the relevance right of the iPad, iPad is way smaller. Like they're deep apps. The like iPhone just dominates man, everything too much. In these days, the iPad scans, growth was still scans, you know super explosive. Right? On their iPad. I think there were some this people were thinking FDA like approved. you know the iPad would like. This next one from Jepson has been like this is the time when Apple was kind of showing the narrative that you know the MacBooks would were getting killed out world, and i think right? there were definitely people expecting and you know ipad apps to apps truly take like over WebEx, the computing experience where what really happened is like ipads kind of really slid in alongside you know so laptop desktop max apps out there. like the classic uh jobs analogy of tru tru trucks and cars all with like you really can't say the ipad has become a car like make it really easy for our customers it's almost like the ipad's like a motorbike and, download and then you have like to their the cars and these stores go of like normal laptops and you've trucks which are like iOS you know, devices. desktop laptop or desktop so let's talk about the future of iOS PCs. and that is iOS 5 like the iPad sells well but it's definitely not like the iPad is the car and everything has been relegated to a truck they're much more and more even foot in this that this is incredible for our developers and I like the iPad but it hasn't you know taken the world it hasn't taken the world over APIs. And some great Again, these these like metallic reflective window treatments uh, are like text users, treatments. They're, they're too much. They should they should have done features. that. Let they look so dated. And walk you through ten now. Like, look at that. <laughs> Number one. Notifications. Yeah. Notification. So this is notification center, right? Because they shipped notifications with iPhone OS three, and for both of those years. Sure you get this incredible modal dialogue for every single push notification that came in. Like you just got this full screen alert that you had to close every single time. So you can get scoring alerts, you can have alerts that pop up, they can have audio, they can also badge you get little badges. the home screen icons. Well, these have been. But just imagine, popular. like, in fact, we have every single notification is modal, takes over the screen, you have to close it every single time. And then if you. Locked your phone, you wouldn't even have a way to see the notifications that came in while the phone was not being money, used. Like, like it was just incredibly immature. And we agree. And so we have built something. And meanwhile, of course, Android, course, Android had a much better notification system. When you get a notification, and what they end up doing in a notification center, you know, it was game, different to Android, but it was definitely in the same vein. Like swiping down from the top brings down the notification tray. Also, in the this is like laughable. Like they really had a UI like this, which had like names and nothing else. But when you unlock it. That list isn't persistent. There's no way to get back to that list and go through those notifications. Well, we've designed a solution that the solves those so issues cool, just in, like, and goes far beyond it. And we call it frame. Notification Center. Notification Center is a single place which combines together all <laughs> the of your notifications. Is a single place. You can get to it at any that time from anywhere of your on your iPhone or iPad or iPod Touch. Just by swiping your finger down Man, the, the linen. To like, here the was a place where the linen... Like, the linen didn't make sense because, you know, this was kind of like a sheet coming over the top of the content on the screen, not, like, an underneath and layer. Beautiful. And not only it do you have linen visual, on each individual voicemail, row, you also have it in all the section messages, separators. It's, like, slightly dark alerts, linen. Like, Facebook updates, this is clearly any push notifications that come bad. from the App Store all end up right here in Notification Center. 
And we've even added the first widgets. Stocks and weather. And the jailbreak right community went mad. You know, that's now when they started doing custom there. widgets. Because if you, you know, no weren't jailbroken, all you had was stocks and weather, and you couldn't change it or edit it or customize it or add other ones. Nice the the, the animation for right the little banners on iOS 5, iOS 6 was always confusing to me because it was like this 3D cube you rotation. Your game and it'll automatically it didn't really make itself. sense. You like, you slide down from the top out. to reveal the notification center, but the individual notifications like were on like this like 3D pivot. We've it didn't really make sense. You can see more information for notifications here. That holds up well. And one of my favorite features is for any one of the notifications in the lock screen, you can just slide your finger across it. Nowadays, and it you don't takes slide, you just tap directly to the app that sends the notification. And let me go ahead and just show this to you now. So I've got a phone here running iOS 5. And you see more information there. Now I'm just going to swipe my finger Boom. right across that text message. And it takes me directly to the Messages app and Did right they into repeat the conversation. The wallpaper? Really convenient. Now to get to the notification center. Like, did the I was the iOS 4 stop wallpaper on the phone the same as the iOS 5 one? Dismiss it by swiping up. Really nice animation. Because I feel like those bubbles. We're still in winter here in San Francisco. They used twice. I get all of my messages here, so text messages and scoring alerts. Is that you really can think here, of a different wallpaper MLB, to use? Uh, dot com at bat. If I tap on that X button, I can just go ahead and clear that out. that out. If I see another One thing that was funny like about uh, I tap on it, takes me directly this iteration of Facebook Center is that the title, really like you see where it says Score again, Center, and then directly below that it says Score Center top, again. Like there was no API to customize that. that. So and all third-party apps would just repeat the text that. twice. So you'd have like the app name at the top, and then you have the app name for every single alert below it in that group. And the only ones that uh, were allowed to deviate from that were like Number system apps, like the phone or text messaging, where like text messaging would say messages, and then you know, each uh, alert would have the name of the, the recipient or sender. And, magazines and that right that kind of iPhone, incredible extra iPad. dimensionality of an additional recently, subtitle line wasn't added to the iOS APIs until iOS 8, I believe. Without missing anything. Already, Maybe even later. Most of the major publishers of magazines and many of newspapers have signed up to support okay, so this is. Now, these are incredible titles. Things like National this is Geographic. Them reading out some newspapers and magazines and has a spin. funny correlation to the uh, March event where they were doing News Plus. So <laughs> it's just like here's iPad, some cool magazines. You get audio and video in addition to all the articles. Honestly, what Apple did Vanity in News Plus in 2019 is what they should have shipped like, like, like popular mechanics in 2011, 2012. Popular science. Because Esquire newsstand. GQ. Which is what they're about to announce here, right? The Fashion little, like, home like screen L, folder thing. The Oprah magazine. It, tech it magazines was like Wire, kind of bad. <laughs> magazine, like, it didn't really Sports change magazine, much. You got, like, the New Yorker, a dedicated section. And newspapers. New ones like The Daily. But you had to scratch up individually. Times. All of the uh, newspaper Chronicle. apps were on magazine apps. Daily like, each Telegram, page of the magazine was, like, this is massive, papers. like, JPEG file. And we've now so you'd have, to, you'd have these massive downloads that every single right issue was, like, 500 meg. It's just gigantic. All of these newspaper and, magazines and so, yeah, they gave them, like, an app store category, place, but it wasn't really an integrated experience. Them, they're automatically downloaded and placed Instead, in if you'd have done screen. something like News Plus the new place right back the then, screen, the place beautiful it'd have been a lot more innovative and a lot more modern. We do background downloads. Because, like, the web back then wasn't really up to speed, where you could still do a lot of cool stuff in app. So but in the modern era, issue comes out, say, you know, most of News Plus is just, like, this dumb sleeping. PDF, and then and the, even the stuff that is iPad, in Apple News format is just thrown through this automatic translation there, machine because none of the publications it. want to invest time in actually making, you know, a rich Apple News Plus experience. So you basically just get, like, PDFs or you get bad mobile websites. We set the cover to be the front page of the new newspaper, and we'll set it to be the cover of the new magazine. I mean, I guess you can call this the start of uh, so that is Apple's obsession with subscriptions. <laughs> the home screen folder thing where you've got, like, the little previews of the, of the issues with the front pages, that was cool. Now, as I'm sure everyone's familiar, Twitter, uh, Twitter is an incredibly popular service. People so in iOS 5, they like integrated Twitter into the system, and then the and we next hear from year, a lot of our customers on iPhone, they added and iPad, Facebook. And iPod Touch, that they love Twitter. 
And so we want to make it even easier for all of our customers to use Twitter on iOS products. And of course, we're doing a number of things. <laughs> in the this. modern era, First, you'd never see this we're happen. Single sign-on. So now, Apple has distanced itself from that stuff dramatically. App, it's built in on the iPhone or iPad. But you know, you, you can, can see the sensibilities even back password, here, like and now you're that they would Twitter. preserve your privacy in much possible. Any app you download off the App Store, it'll just say, "Can I use your credentials?" And you say, "Yes." You're logged in. You don't need to re-log in every single time. Tweety. So Tweety would look so good back then. Next, we've integrated Twitter in with many of our apps, like camera and photos. So now if you're at a concert and you take a photo and you want to tweet that photo, just tap on the action button. It's a new option, tweet. That's just like... It brings up this beautiful tweet sheet. Hilarious. Because obviously back then, they didn't have customer sensibility. So Apple would have to manually have add type. sharing and options to every single service that they wanted to support. It was clearly unscalable, but tweeted the photo. It's that's that. just how they did it. And that didn't change to iOS 8, so you know, they had 5, 6, 7, but they would just manually add sharing options. From photos and camera, you can tweet articles I mean, the design was cool. Websites. You could probably get rid of the paperclip, but YouTube. the rest of it is not too and bad. You can tweet about businesses you know, or given our modern sensibilities. Maps. Beyond all of this, we added integration with contacts. The contacts integration was now, not as cool as how it's described here. Like, you'd have to manually go into settings and press update contacts. And so, you can use Twitter to automatically so you do it once, but the then if they change their profile picture, it wouldn't stay in sync. You'd have to go back into settings, click on Twitter, then click update contacts again, and it would do the whole thing over again. It was a nice thing to do, but they definitely could have you know, actually done it more proactively. Safari. Next is Safari. You know, Safari is the best mobile web browser out there. It's also the most popular. In fact, nearly two thirds of all mobile web browsing is done on Safari. Beyond this, we took Apple's Safari engine and open sourced it. And it's the basis okay. of all web browsing <laughs> on Android. So the Safari engine is the basis of more than 90% of all web browsing. Not sure why that's devices. entirely relevant, but okay. Well, in iOS 5, we're making Safari even better. We've got Reader. The first is Reader. That was new this year? Wow. Safari Reader becomes available up here as a new button when you're reading a story on a website. If you just tap on that button, we take the story you're reading and make it front and center. Yeah, so this wasn't like an Apple invention. The font size right. There was a even there was like a, a browser extension called Readability, story, right? That would do this exact thing. And Apple had just kind of like it. we put it in a single scrolling remade story. it and integrated really it into the browser convenient. directly. Which is cool, like and you know, people still use Reader a lot these days. But it wasn't like I can't on remember if readability that, was open source or not. You can now email the contents of the story. I remember people were a bit Before mad that Apple the link. kind of just like but now when you it. email, you Good get the link looking. plus the contents in your Compose window. Who, what, by the way, and who all, wants to have the contents of the, of the browser page really in well your email if there's someone like, what is wrong with the link alone? On the iPhone as well. It's the perfect size for it. It sets the font size right. It's really nice to read stories. So that's Safari Reader. Reading the second one. Me. Is reading list. Obviously, Marco Altman's Insta paper was pretty reading prominent at this time. Is a simple and convenient way for you to but quickly save a story. The reading list didn't really pose read much of a threat, at, at least in this list. time, because and the you, you just add it to the list, but they wouldn't even like get downloaded or offline use. All of your iOS devices, and even the reading list on Okay, Safari so they, they would Mac sync, so you could use like you'd have one list across all your devices, but you wouldn't get offline browsing. So. If you don't have time to finish it here on the iPad, and one thing I do you use reading this quite a lot now, later uh, on your iPhone, and but it's kind of like ad hoc bookmarks. Like browsing. I don't reuse really bookmarks, we but if there is stuff that I know that I'm going to get back to in you know, a week or a week and a half time, I'll like put it on the reading list instead, and it's kind of like serves as a reminder. And it's quite nice in the you modern era. You. you can just like scroll from story to story, like in reading list. You can just All keep right. scrolling to the bottom when you're looking. Uh, it can just take you to the next here one, so you just have like this seamless, continuous reading experience. Whereas, here. you know, in its first iteration, first like what we're seeing here, is, it oh, your yeah, tabs, tabs, in, tabs in the iPad. Now. Do you remember the original tabs just on the tab iPad? On you had to like press Great. like the little like thumbnail button, and then you just like on, zoom uh, you out to a screen of nine site, tabs, and they were just like full screen previews, and you click on one, and it would zoom out of the screen. And I don't think they really like 
You normally have to Especially with the original many, many iPad's memory, it just didn't have right, the capacity to actually here, store uh, more than one page at a time, so you'd always have to reload. Well, and so with OS 5, they didn't probably tapping, which is nice. It loads the entire story up in Reader. Now I can just scroll through, it gets rid of all the distractions, lets me concentrate just on the content. That is Reader. That is Reader. <laughs> you even see that when it goes between pages it's funny here, seeing where you would have the, had to, you know, tap uh, separate next page, address field in search bar. You like, break, so you know when it's going through I don't the think they unified that to seven. Let's say if I don't have time to finish the story right now, I can just tap the bookmarks bar item, and uh, here I have reading list. I tap plus. And obviously and that was better. Frame like, at the time and again, was already I can go single, this single search field thing. On, uh, you know, on but Apple works like, stuck to their guns. Any of my other I've iOS separated devices. versions for a long Great. time. And if I really like this and I want to tweet about it, let me show you the Twitter integration while we're here. If I tap tweet, brings up the tweet sheet. Cheat. We do completion, so I have a, hit, I have a friend, uh, Gary Dunn, so I hit at G, automatically fills in the name, tap that, and I can say, you know, I like this one. I miss Force Tool, and like. I can optionally add my location. Tap I don't know send, how much of, and it's tweeted. It's you know, that I was finessed. You can really attribute really him personally. He definitely, like, cultivated a good throughout. culture, and he was, you know, at least on stage, he was cool. And, you know, we've heard the stories about how Italian is very abrasive and he kind of became right, like up. Steve Jobs without the reputation to precede him, right? Like, you know, all of us clearly, you know, Jobs and him are pretty close. Like, as close as Jobs and I were on, do, like, the industrial buy, design like side, the software stuff was obviously, like, a place associated, Jobs and like, Forster leading, and leading the charge. Dog when I get home. And some have a time associated, say, buy concert tickets Monday at and 10 a.m. when they go on sale. Wouldn't it be great if like you get jobs could have died two years sooner and that would also have kicked force like sooner? Like I think phone. from what we that, know is he was annoying other people. You, like, to do things, as opposed you know, to well before jobs like it wasn't like after jobs died he suddenly became a mega maniac well, and started exactly like going crazy. He was just does. like that was just his attitude towards the business, right? And he clearly got results. But he was just like an annoying guy who didn't get didn't super get along with everyone else that was there on the executive side. Uh, dates associated with these reminders. So you'll be ri reminded on that But you date. can't deny, like... You can I also assign location. Nice. This is really cool. I could set up a reminder to say, remind me to call my wife when I leave the, the convention today. And it'll set a geofence up around Moscone Center, and so when I get in my car to leave, it's interesting that it'll the pop the up and take call. <laughs> Like the 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 the, the, the check mark there for when I leave is really not very like clear. Like it's kind of grayed out. Call in the car. You can of course search through all your reminders and reminders will no reminders that for the Mac at this time. Mac using Caldav and they even with Outlook on, on Windows like using Exchange. Also and on that, that icon, reminders. it started off saying milk, eggs, and bread, but by the time it shipped, they just replaced the like, text labels with like just blocks of color. I think as a localization. Next. So if it, it, they wanted an icon that could be used you know, internationally, and so they didn't want to put actual text on there. The iPhone 4 is widely regarded as having one of the best cameras on a mobile phone. It's also one of the most popular. Is it number one yet? If you look at cameras used to take photos and then post them to Flickr, now this is all cameras, not just uh, cameras on phones. Okay, it's close. You see where the iPhone 4 is. Also, Flickr. <laughs> Remember Flick. It is already by far the most popular camera on a phone to take photos, and it very soon will be the most popular camera overall. Well, we the iPhone 4's camera was camera good, but it wasn't quite at, like, you don't need doing. a proper camera. The first thing we're doing that is didn't really happen until, I'd say, like... In and take a photo. I feel like the iPhone 6 was the time when the people started, like, seriously, do I really need to carry my original camera? So this UI here looks very so awkward. Like, I'm not even talking about the lock screen really shortcut thing. I'm talking about the media controls. Like, those four buttons are very close together, icon. and then you've got the now playing information as well, icon, like just shoved in there. You're brought directly and immediately to the camera, and you're ready to take a photo. Now, this was when like the camera app didn't have a million modes really in it, cool so they could just have like a camera shutter button and then one switch for video or photo. It's pretty elegant. We'll protect it, and you can't see any previous photos you've taken or anything else on the phone without typing your passcode. 
Things are I think the modern up, camera app UI is... Actually, I should refrain that. The, the modern and camera app UI is, is nice, but when they transitioned oh. from uh, iPhone 8 to iPhone 10 and, like, later notch phones, the iPhone, the camera UI did not keep up to speed. Like, there's so much wasted space on the current camera interface. And they improved that it slightly cool, with um, iOS 13, specifically on iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro. Like, you get so, that slightly more this, optimized camera experience. But, We've but they could definitely, like, take line. advantage of, like, the, so you can the, the ears of the notch and stuff, right? Line it up. There's still quite a lot of black space. You can now pinch to zoom right within the camera. And... Wait, AEAF log didn't come to iOS 5. Over part of the scene now, we'll set the auto exposure and auto focus lock. And you can even move it around oh, and it'll stick there, to that. Yeah. Now... This is a really advanced feature, and we've brought it to the iPhone, and we've made it really easy for everyone to use. Now, next, once you've taken your great photos, the editing controls you know, were edit really right primitive on your this iPhone. time. And your iPad. So you, you could do things crop like crop and rotate. Red eye. Red eye reduction. So if you've taken the photo at left, where the flash has caused a red eye, you can automatically oh, so remove this time, that red all eye the edits right were destructive. on your iPhone or iPad. And we even brought over the one click enhance that we That's why the save uh, buttons like yellow and black like warning warning on the Mac and it brought that Do you to actually want to do this? <laughs> so you can see when you applied one tap enhance to the right how the color tones look so much nicer how it pulls detail out of shadow. Yeah, that's, really so that's nice. it. So you can crop so all some great photo editing Mac features and, that's and yeah. really nice camera enhancement. Which is fine I guess like cropping is what you need. Next is Mail. I'm trying to remember what now, was mail new in Mail this year. Mail is one of the most used applications on both I the think iPhone, they added... iPod, and iPod Touch. Or iPad and iPod Touch. And we're making it even better in iOS 5. Oh. We're adding rich text formatting, so you can set things as bold, Ooh. italic, and underline. You can control Don't the indentation. So if you're forwarding something, you can... I think on the iPad, this was, yeah, they that. added the swipe gesture. You can now drag if they say the addresses it. between two CC and BCC. I prefer to read that Don't have to retype them again. Wait, you, you can flag, you can flag a message flag an until I was fine. Jesus. Now, this next one has been a, an incredibly popular request. In addition to searching from, to, and subject, you can search the entire contents of all your messages, both the messages People on hate your phone search, like and all the messages back on the mail and server. Actually, find so everything. Co entire contents of your messages. Oh, here it is. Yeah, swipe to inbox. For the iPad, we added a really nice swipe to inbox gesture, so it makes it really nice to use this in portrait. So you can swipe it on, tap on something, swipe it off. And with every I release ask. of iOS or iOS, we continue to add more support for our enterprise customers. And one example of that in iOS 5 is we've added support. For S -mime. Secure email. So now, I think we've done a really nice job of this. I'm, so now I'm not, not even looking at the actual email. I'm just looking at the status bar where you've got the signal strength and you've right got the 3G. The Was it really blue at that time? This will be encrypted when sent to the other person. They lit that stuff in blue. Let me just go ahead and give you a demo of two of these like, features now. The fact that the signal bars and the 3G indicator are all the same color just kind of bleeds into one. All right. So first, I can just show you a simple gesture. I can just pull on the inbox right from there so that anywhere cool. you are on your nice porch, just pull it on you don't have to go hunt up and find the right button for it you can see we have flagging here so i can tap on that flagged message oh one other feature we've added is a built-in dictionary throughout the os as a service now so before we had a dictionary in the ibooks app but we now have brought that to the entire os so all apps from the app store can use it so here, if uh, I just press down, let's say, on Michi's, glass. I don't know what that is. Let's I would say. miss you. Uh, I get a define in addition to copy. Tap define. That was a cool thing. There it is. They kind of the ruined the, the lookup. Now it has like eight different things in it, and it's the UI is cool. If I, say, respond to this message, again, I can grab one of these addresses, and now just drag it to BCC. Does anyone need to do that? Drag it to two, and rearrange it. I've like never it. used that. It's really nice and easy. Now, there's one more feature I want to show you. And it's actually a system-wide feature having to do with the keyboard. Oh, now you're hitting when me in the feels. The original iPhone, Here we, we go. We revolutionized the way people would type on multi-touch displays. Pour one out for the split keyboard. We keep on challenging ourselves to make that even better. Well, we have a new variant of the keyboard, 
in iOS 5 for the iPad, which we think people who like to type with their thumbs while holding it are really going to like. In the bottom right, you see the keyboard button, and now it has some grab this handles. This is such perfect execution. If I just take those and drag it up, it that splits so cool. it into two. That animation is perfect. And so what it does is it just moves the keys closer to your thumbs on the side, so you can, you can put it wherever you want. It's really nice, and it's persistent for every app in the system. It just stays where you put it. If you want to put it back down, just press and hold. If you dock and merge, it goes back down to the bottom. So even that is such a keyboard. like that is so good, and yet if you have a twelve point nine inch Hyper Pro, if you have an eleven inch Hyper Pro, no split keyboard for you. And that's mail. That is like Number a, a travesty eight. that they don't have that they haven't sorted out. Here we go. It's PC, PC free. free. <laughs> Why is someone on FaceTime like? In the iPad? <laughs> so Android and Google have been railing Apple for the fact that. You still like to plug into iTunes to update or do anything. And obviously so the iPad was trying to be a PC-free device, but you still had to plug it in to update the it, iPhone, to activate it, all that good stuff them. syncing. And so it took them like oh, a year and a half to get there. Box. <laughs> what was funny is when they did iBooks for iPhone the year before, Jobs was trying to like start what? off the idea that everything was going to be wisely syncing you know, because they uh, fact, would like sync your bookmarks the iPad, we're over the air and so you had to like sync it to do it. A lot of customers coming and you knew they were working on this stuff, but it was just like the fact that they iPad actually did it was device. significant. I don't own a computer. I want to buy an, an iPhone. It's my only device, my only actually internet access for where I live will be my iPhone. We know we're selling into a lot of places. I wonder what those percentages the look like now these days. Don't have computers. Sure, they got they a bit higher. They want to buy right? an iOS device as their only device. Like twenty percent exactly of UK households didn't have a PC in twenty eleven. That seems really high. Now, when you take your iPhone out of the box you're instead see of seeing this, this you're going to see this. Slide to setup. You can now set up and activate your device right on the device, and you are ready to go. It's that easy. And of course, there's some other things we had to do to make this possible. Software updates are now over the iOS 5.1. This update improves stability and performance and adds a new feature in mail. That's quite funny that they actually like mod that out. So you no longer need to go and plug into a computer just to update your software. Delta and updates. And of course, they're now Delta updates. That UI is pretty nice because when you press uh, download and install, the cogs of the wheel would start rotating. So instead of downloading the entire OS, you just download what's changed. Like they still have that, the but the icon's simpler we, now, so the animation's not as nice. of the apps on the iPhone, iPad, iPod. What stands out to me just looking at the home screen here is the shadowing. The like, look how thick the shadows are on, on all the labels. And let's add that functionality right to iOS. So for instance. You and like back, back in the day, that you wouldn't even blink an eyelid at that. But nowadays, calendars. now that People everything's now just been completely deshadowed, right it just iOS. stands out. I actually you do think, though, that shadowing photos. is pretty damn useful, really and they should probably have it back in more there. ways than so people use it at the moment. Because hands, red eye reduction, right it's just good for contrast and readability. And even in mail now, you can create. And I don't buy the argument that like it's no longer needed in a red display world. Like that's just rubbish. If you have light and backgrounds, like just look at those things. They have shadows and they now, they have drop so shadows on the icons, and they have text okay. shadows on every label. Like, yeah, you, know, you could probably have like just text shadows and no drop shadows, right? Like, that's a decent compromise. Game Center. Next is Game Center. The Game Center situation is really interesting at the moment because obviously, the you know, Apple's pushing hard with Apple Arcade, and they've added like MFI game, game controller support for PlayStation and Xbox controllers. And so, but about nine months ago, they've we actually like game deprecated Center. Game Center and we did it <laughs> so much. It, even it was a standalone application. Now against. it's just like this and setting also, screen. To make it easy you have to go find. How you're doing and I don't think friends. they even let you uh, well, in just manage nine your friends. Like the, half the features don't even exist anymore it, unless you've all, like if you've got game friends Center you can delete them, but you can't add new friends. Now, like it's really weird. To put that into perspective, so I feel like they're gonna have to do something newer with that. Like. About they can probably years. just like, brand it as arcade, like. And they have around 30 million users. If they took Apple Arcade as a standalone so application, Center like stripped it out of a tab in the App Store, and we're they could add like the social section. You don't need like full on, more you know, and friends and stuff. Photos, like you just need you leaderboards, achievements, that type of thing. Photos. 
You can now compare and, and yourself against you could your do friends, friends using achievement points. You could do like an informal social network. So of kind of like what they do with iCloud photo well. sharing, where you could, you know, you can have you also, friend sharing, but it's not like full on. Like you don't need like friend discovery and all the stuff they had here. The games that you like. We've also added game recommendations. So and I feel if they did add really that social stuff, arcade would become new, a lot more compelling because you'd have and and also you'd have everyone playing them. the same games. Like Once you've discovered a game here, you like, part of the problem was you, can you know game set used every app on the store, and so it's pretty games. rare that you this know everyone you knew was playing the same titles. Whereas if everyone you know's got pay paying that five dollar a month subscription, they're only picking from a pool of like a hundred, hundred and fifty, right? So you can have a lot more concentration, a lot more people being able to interact and play with each other. And there are a lot of multiplayer games on Apple Arcade, games out there like Scrabble, <laughs> but, the but working out how you actually like meant to do it that's supported right is just not very good because there is no dedicated application really nice enhancement or any good UI for it. The Game Center. Next. iMessage. Is iMessage. Now, I believe we have the best messaging client out there on the iPhone. It works tremendously well, well to send text the green bubbles, baby. photos and videos. The green and bubbles. And our customers love it. Our iPhone customers. But what about our iPad customers? And our iPod Touch customers? They've been asking us for a messaging solution. We never really so got like the background 5, on this. Like what triggered Apple to do my message? Because all iOS 5 customers. It was kind of out there for them. Like, obviously, it was really successful, but it was kind of, they kind of just like lucked out. I think like they didn't charge for it. And we call it iMessage. There was so I, iMessage and supports obviously Force was using here the justification of adding iPad, messaging to iPad and, and iPod Touch, iPod but Touch. it does everything you've come. They could to have done something where they just mirrored the text, and that was obviously iPhone. a feature they added later on, right? Where you can actually just see your green photos, text messages videos, on your iPad and reply there, and it proxies to the phone. Like that would have been a more logical step for them to do, I think, than adding and this whole custom really nice messaging platform. Things like delivery receipts. Like maybe they saw it as ecosystem login at that time, but. Clearly, no one expected the phenomenon of iMessage to be as big as it was, right? But this is one of my favorite typing indications. So you can tell now if I'd someone starts typing like, and they're responding to you, you know you're. Because that was a big undertaking, message. right? Like iMessages are pushed to all your devices. Doing so iMessage is a big deal. Start a conversation on your iPad. And a lot of work for them. And later pick up your iPhone. And they just did it as like an iMessage feature right for free. Left off with all the context of that conversation to date. It is supported over both 3G and Wi-Fi, and everything over is sent air. encrypted over the wear. Over I the think air. we'll see a lot of iMessage in iOS 14 as well, actually. They're going like to do a lot of like demo of upgrades for now. group texting. So I also like to invite Maybe the ability Sean, to delete messages. Vice President of Product Marketing to help me. Hey, Doss. Scott. Good old Joswiak. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. If you don't mind, I'm going to play a game, though. Uh, playing a game. OK. Try not to bother me. Uh, so. Product marketing. <laughs> uh, so he's on the, his the iPhone called? left. I'm on my iPad mm. on the right hand side. I'll go ahead and launch messages. That was here. a fun game, though. So here I have a conversation going with Jaws. Normally we don't stand next to each other when having these conversations. It's the most I've talked to you all week. Let's grab lunch after the show. Uh, no. Okay, so when I send this to him, you'll notice as he plays the game, ah. it comes in right at the top. And he can keep on playing the game, so it's not interrupting him. See, that cube oh, animation just lovely job playing this didn't make sense. Don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they were like, we can do a 3D animation here, so we will, rather than But at than any actually... time, he can get right back Ooh. to that message. Uh oh. At any time. Uh, I think this might be a good time. At any time, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's so addictive. <laughs> <laughs> just by pulling down, tapping no. on that, takes him right to uh, this. Now, as he starts typing, See on my side where there's the three dots in the balloon. That lets me know he's currently responding. Well, I'll check maybe some other messages while he's doing so. <laughs> so then when he sends the message, whether it's Apple, Google, it any company, delivered, when you have like been delivered two people right on stage device, doing like a scripted demo, it always feels when I tap on his message, cheesy. It sends a read receipt. It never feels red, organic and flowing. And like I think one the of the best things Apple great. does is they only have like one person on stage at a time most of the time so they don't they just don't walk into those situations we can also send like you'll have someone speak and you'll have someone present but you won't have like rarely will you here. have 
right, you know, the, the person presenting, room, interacting yeah. with the person doing the demo, which is something you see a lot happening, like Samsung uh, events. Send him a little picture again. You can tell from the dots on his side that. And it never comes across very right well. Now. Even like Send here, I feel like this is pretty awkward. And again, we go over. And the, in the even more well awkward version of this was when they did the iMessage features with iOS 10, where they did the iMessage app store and they did the bubble effects and stuff. Like. And again, I'm on Imran Chowdhury and uh, Bethany so Giorgino did iPad, the demos iPod there, and they were just as iPhone. awkward, right? Thanks, like, I'm, I, I don't think I can think of a time when I've seen like a stage demo with two people interacting, and it's actually been a pleasant watch. <laughs> it's always so frustrating. Like, if you're going to have two people on stage, just let one of them do the, the demo and not interact with them at all. We've just built, them so we know how to scale this. We have incredible features here in iOS 5. Notification system, which so I guess the flagship stuff in this really release nice. was notification center, PC free, and iMessage. Magazine, but the iMessage benefits would take iPad, a while or iPhone, to actually like great Twitter integration, a new be reminders app. I mean. You can be PC free if you want, and the new iMessage application. And these are just two hundred of the features. more than two. That was a cliche. They'd always have two hundred new features. features. There's really something but I think for in recent times they've kind of moved away from that. And there's other things like AirPlay mirroring. You can now mirror your entire iPad 2 if they mirror right it was to your iOS television 5, okay. wirelessly using Apple TV. <laughs> Wi-Fi sync to iTunes. Before, you had to... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before, before, you had to go back and plug into your computer to sync, and now... When you were it's kind of funny, so even though they're thing, like pushing for PC free, they're also simultaneously were like, man, you can do iTunes Wi Fi. So, so, yeah, you still need a computer, you just do it so without plugging in with a wire. Day. iPad split keyboard, like, that is. There's also that is some the really nice new Please bring that back. So you can just I really click the right between your apps. It's really nice. Well, not only is there something for every one of our customers, there's something for every one of our developers. Some great new development tools, including significant enhancements to Xcode instruments in the simulator. Page view controller. Oh, yeah, the page view controller so that third party apps could the use the um, core image like page color fair that iBooks did. To iOS. Not many people use it, though. This allows developers to do complex image operations like red eye reduction, face detection, right from within their apps. When are you so you're getting asking it? Yourself, Today. When are you getting it? And the answer is, we are giving a developer seed to you today. So again, this was a change of... <laughs> that guy's still on FaceTime. So again, this is news, I think, because the schedule had been changed, right? Like, this was the first year they weren't doing hardware at WWC. It was software only. And the software and event had moved from March to June. You can go and, and so use those people weren't entirely 100% knowing that it was actually going to be and today. But iOS 5 will ship to all of our customers this fall iOS 5 will support the same devices that we supported with our last software update. So that's the iPhone 3GS and iPhone 4, all the iPads, iPad and iPad 2, and the third and fourth generation iPod Touch. And that is iOS 5. And so now we get the return And that is the second of the software of products we want to tell you about today. Section. To tell you about the third, I'd like to turn it back over to Steve. Thanks. We're what, one hour 20 so, into this? And we've got about like 40 minutes so left, so half hour on iCloud and then Good. five minutes on iPod. Well, I'll try not to blow it. So the context here was so I get to talk Google's about iCloud. Android operating system we working on this had for very... Some time now. And we're really was, excited was centralized it. on the server, right? You'd store about everything on Google ago, servers. And it would all sync to Google servers, contacts, insights. email. And that was... That the PC I don't think folks at that time, but was like the, the core services were all syncing through Google's cloud. And what did that mean? Apple's well, model, they did have mobile me, you were put your digital but you had to pay for Where it. Else were you gonna put whereas Google would do it for free. Your digital video off and your stuff digital like, um, you know, device backups, course, what apps you got installed, your home screen layouts. Right? You were acquire it that would just sit on your Android like Google account, whereas uh, for Apple, you'd have to sync through the computer. sync it to the Mac. And, everything and so was iCloud was the kind of glue that actually made PC free for the happen. better part of 10 years, but it's broken down. And Apple had been focusing on this like 
digital hub model for a long time. Well, because where everything is like changed. sitting on one central computer they you have at home and then you come back music. and you sync up with each. They now all have photos. They now all have video. I and think so what I can remember from this section of the event is Jobs is very um, right on my iPhone, very tediously describes get that to the process of stuff syncing from one place right, to another. IPad, you get like the same like. slide five different times with just so a different media type and he just shows it. He just shows like a picture of it then I have going to down and going other up. Devices to the Mac to get that song. But then they've deposited some photos on the Mac, so I have yeah, to sync it's crazy with so many different devices with syncing in one thing. So and keeping these devices in sync is driving us crazy. This is where they do iCloud. <laughs> so we've got a great solution for this problem, and we think this solution is our next big insight. And mobile Mini costs ninety nine dollars a year, and obviously the iCloud they do for free to just be for five gigs. <laughs> The, the like hilarity iPhone, of the fact that the five gig base sort of story still continues. The digital hub, the center in of your digital life, into the cloud, because all these new devices have communications built into them. They can all talk to the cloud whenever. Yeah, here they we go. Want. We we see this animation so now, literally about five repeated times, just with different things iPhone, each time. It's sent up to the cloud immediately. Let's say I take some pictures with it. Those pictures are in the cloud, and they are now pushed down to my devices completely automatically. And now everything's in sync with me not this even is a having big to jump. think like, about it. They did a lot in this release because out of my pocket. I don't have to so much stuff was just tied to manual syncing, and so as well as doing over the air updates, as well as doing the, you know, the Wi-Fi sync for OG, ripping out the cores of all these right? of all these apps and, and actually making them sync to iCloud first was a big deal. It, it must have taken the whatever, and a lot of engineering effort to start it up moving to the cloud this Drag whatever you want back out on your other devices. And something that I think, think people confused really about iCloud for a long time was that, and we call it iCloud. They now, thought stores your content that iCloud wasn't actually storing cloud, your content and, and that it was just like a sync engine. So devices. you'd have like so document A on your iPhone it, and then it needs to come to the iPad and, and then like iCloud would be the, the train that devices. transports document A also, to the iPad. But the document A was never apps. actually stored on the cloud. And that just wasn't true so because they would also store and there's the nothing new to learn on the cloud as well. At that time, there wasn't like a file system, it just like a metaphor, works. as you got with that cloud drive later. So it's just kind of like stored in the, the metadata of the application that's stored in the cloud. Okay, there's the mobile me joke. Now, why trust us? We're the ones that brought you mobile me. And mobile me had a lot of problems. Them. They're the ones that brought me mobile me. <laughs> Remember we had a lot of crashing out the gate, stuff wasn't very reliable. It wasn't our finest hour. Jobs at a famous meeting that. where but he like fired the guy on the spot. Now, the three core apps in mobile me were contacts, calendar, and mail. So previously you'd pay ninety nine dollars a year for date. contacts, calendar, we've and email. Thrown them away. We've re architected and rewritten them from the ground up. Whereas now they just the bundle it apps. for free. And we've put them on all of our devices. So, it was kind of insane. They charged an nine dollars a year for that feature. Contacts, when I make a new contact on my iPhone, go, there's the animation. Brought up to the cloud where it's the stored contact in the goes cloud, up, the contact goes back right? down. The truth is on the cloud. Also, and then it's automatically low at the old down to my other devices. Portrait so contacts <laughs> app on the it's iPad there, like that was stupid. I just update a contact on my iPhone and don't even think about it, and that contact is updated on all my other devices. And if there I change can it do on again, any right? device, yep. it's updated on all devices, wirelessly, automatically, without needing a thing. And it goes back down. So that's contacts. Here's calendars. Works much the same way. I make a new calendar event on my iPhone. It's stored in the cloud, and it's pushed to my other devices. Pretty cool. We've also added calendars. Share calendars sharing. have obviously been around for ages, so but I really example, don't think people use them that much. Like, few calendars with my wife. My family certainly Two doesn't like the idea of like a shared family calendar. Right, and I add doesn't really happen. They still have a uh, calendar a on the wall that they use that stuff. Like I don't know why people can't phone, really get on board with that. Again, I think in the modern the day cloud. people just kind of like obviously if you have like and big events like parties and stuff you make like a Facebook event or something or I think people just like rely on 
texting everyone, oh, I'm going to do this on this day, and then this rely on each individual person adding it to their own personal Again, goes calendars. up to the cloud and back to my iPhone. It's that simple. I also still kind of and wanting so some kind of like physical hardware that can replace the wall calendar. Like, in the cloud, then you could have on any the calendar, device, like an almost like an e-ink board that would you could attach to the wall, which you have the calendar syncing, and then you could add your events to your device and it would just show on the account. Because I think people like having like the calendar on the wall aspect to it, which you just can't get today. But it's even better now. We give you a mail account at at me.com. Your new messages again are pushed to all So here they say you got a mail account at me.com, but they also offered at iCloud.com as well. No ads, obviously dig at Gmail. And no ads. We don't want ads, but at that time they were still pushing for iAd, which is kind of funny. We build products that we want for ourselves too, and we just don't want ads. But we can't get there. So these are the three apps that form the core of mobile me. We used to sell them for a subscription Those three apps are free. price of $99 annually. As of today, this product That was the right move. They couldn't keep charging for it. They were getting like and embarrassed by free. the free offerings of Android. <laughs> like a lot of people use like a but we contact. Didn't stop I think there. most people use iCloud calendars. Very few we've people use iCloud Mail just because Gmail is so dominant. That we've brought into the iCloud universe. And as long as you can use Gmail from the, the Mail app, it's not that's not going to change. Is of course the App Store. In the App Store, you kind of like how nowadays they use Siri so is just like a general term for like any smart intelligence feature. On your devices. I feel like Maybe some of these the stuff that they group under iCloud was, is just kind of called that so just for, for marketing reasons rather than it actually have any like relevancy at all. Like, on all your like purchase records are not really a cloud feature, there. right? That's just like stored in your account information. And you can just re-download it. We've added this button here, which is download from the cloud. And it's kind of insane that it just and didn't you exist before. App on that device, you just push that button, but it's not really a cloud feature. Like, to that device, right? And there's no extra charge. This you can no call a cloud feature. This is all my downloads, right? Now, we've done that for your purchase history. What about for yeah, devices? Yeah, so you get one out of download of each app. Well, for devices, when you buy them in the future. I don't know if people use that or not. I can't Yelp, remember if it's, say, if it's turned on by default or not the either. Cloud downloads it to all I turn it devices. off if it is on. No extra charge. Just because all a lot of the time, an app on your phone you don't want on your iPad, and it just kind of gets messy in your phone and you to delete it. So that's what we're doing with the App Store. Books, they're doing, okay, so we're picking the same. Same thing. Same You've path with books as well. Is a picture of a book. It goes up and it goes back down. You want to get it on your iPhone, say? Just push the button. It downloads to that. This only applied to ebooks, though. It didn't apply to audiobooks. They only added audiobooks uh, so purchasing and re-downloading very recently, like within away. the last two years. It downloads years. it to all your devices now. And if you're reading it on one device, this bookmark is stuff they already had last year. On your iPad, and you've just got to run. They wisely sync notes, page, bookmarks, you bookmark and, page, and your bookmark place. Sent up to the cloud they did that from the, as soon as they added again, iBooks to right from so so now it's just kind of repeating that. Another, the rest of the chapter as an example to make it sound more impressive, which is fine. It all just works. The iBooks I can make really quick. Cool. Um, and now backup. We talked about being PC free. Scott talked about how you can wireless okay, so this is like backup, backup your devices daily to your PC or your Mac, but let's do it to the cloud as well for those people that want to be completely PC free. So we've added wireless backup to the cloud and uh, basically once daily, we're gonna back up a lot of your important contents to the cloud. If you ever get a new phone or have to replace a phone, you literally type in your Apple ID and password and, and I don't know at the stage where they were thinking of iCloud as a real like profit so, driver for them. But obviously that's what it became, right? So we automatically do daily backups to iCloud over Wi-Fi. Okay, that, <laughs> we back up your the camera roll thing is obviously like complicated books. because we back up your camera that would be stored on your backup. Videos. 
but it wouldn't be like Echo Photo Library settings, or button is now called Echo Photo, where updates. each individual picture is immediately synchronized across the devices, nothing changes. It was just like a blob of data, which was everything on your phone was backed up in one container. So that is and those are three other apps that come with iCloud. But One of these three is PhotoStream, <laughs> which so I think did more to confuse everybody than actually help. We have the three apps that are amazing. The most inventive Okay, this one's documents in the cloud. So this is like iWork, and, uh, apps. I'd love to tell you about them. S using document storage. The first one is documents in the cloud. So... And this was the model at the time, right? Your document, you didn't really have if like centralized iPad, documents. You'd go into I an app, which would control like a library of your files, right? of your active files in that application. And so document, what and they needed was APIs so that each individual app in would synchronize cloud. to the iCloud data store instead of and storing it locally and they could sync it back down. Completely automatically. That and model was simple and understandable, but it wasn't very scalable or flexible when you so needed to do something more complicated where you're, you know, synthesizing information from different device. things. And so that's, they kind of and gave up trying to invent an, a new replacement for the file system and just brought the file system back numbers, with iCloud Drive, and which is now called the Files app. As a matter of fact, the versions we just released last week have Roger Rosner. And to demonstrate what this is like... He iWork, most recently was on I'd stage like for Roger Roger, Apple News Plus, right? Our VP of iWork up to give us a quick demo. But before that, he would do, like, the iWork demos. Thank you, Steve. All right, let's I think it's pretty in insane, like, how feature-rich the iWork apps were. Let's say you're working even on a back keynote then, presentation like, on your iPad. From the first version 2010 and then the 2011 version. Presentation with all those awesome they were pretty full features. It wasn't... The problem with but the iWork apps at this time is they home, weren't one-to-one um, -one compatible with the Mac you apps. So you, you were basically having, like, two different strands. You'd well, have, like, iOS documents and then Mac documents. And if you imported a Mac document to your iPads, a lot of the stuff wouldn't work and just wouldn't be available. You and then if you did your iPhone, iPhone no to Mac, it would choice. kind of work, but it wouldn't be perfect. So and so around 2013, 2014, here, so they re-engineered kind of the iWork apps to instead be on one central foundation, which actually iWork. meant stripping out a lot of the features that were in the desktop versions so they could have feature parity and, and document parity and document and perfect one-to-one -one compatibility across all their platforms. And then they slowly started adding features back. But that was definitely the right move because... It even remembered what slide we were Having looking like at. syncing compatibilities between and your own platforms to, was bad. Play, play it right on my iPhone. And this and obviously, what they're exactly showing here is before that file over here. the kind of real-time calibration neat. stuff, which came later. This is just like, you edit a document, it saves, you go into everything, it saves back. Of course, all the iWork apps use iCloud. I'm not happy so with the current state of pages. all apps just defaulting to and seeing a files browser out, when you, you launch uh, them. Inspired to make some changes to like it feels on. like they could do a better job there. So maybe I'm if they gonna, had like, you know, recent, like a better like here. integrated experience maybe of recent documents, maybe you click to see the full file system. Because I think the file system still confuses people. Like that's, that experience there when you have a few files to manage is so much better. And I'm done. But the problem is when you have a hundred files all of a sudden, in my pocket, that I becomes unwieldy. It. So it's a hard and, uh, balance to strike. The background, and it is feels like Apple just kind of gave up and it's and like, okay, fine, we'll just do, we'll just do a files app and iPad. shut you up. But so when I get they didn't home, really tackle the original problem they were trying to solve. They just kind of fell pages. back on you can see in traditional the left, PC experiences. Already been updated. <laughs> and there are all my edits. Absolutely no effort on my part. And that... One thing I'd love I to know is why they always wrote the demo text in like a different it. font. Thank like you. it was always italicized in that kind of that more script font. Whereas at that time they just used Helvetica for everything else. Okay, thanks. thanks, Roger. And documents in the cloud really completes our iOS Yeah, here you go. This is the discussion about the file system. Story story too. In other words... A lot of us have been working for 10 years to get rid of the file system so the user didn't have to worry about it. When you try to teach... Yeah, this, this teach like, philosophy is 100% true, all computers to use. he's kind of lying in this completes the story. The like, file system and then difficulty it just wasn't, for most wasn't good. So <laughs> like, it, it just wasn't 
complete like there were problems it was fine for simple uses but if you went anything more extreme the presentation of its own documents just like mail manages the presentation of its own messages but the piece that we weren't finished with was how do we move those documents around to different devices and documents in the cloud solved that problem for us Apps can store documents. Now, all of this is perfect and how it works today. iCloud pushes It's just the issue is users' devices automatically. If you're going cross device, if you're going cross application, on any device, if you're trying to make like an essay which involves editing images, which involves charts, which involves you know multimedia things coming together, that's where it breaks down. Like the best experiences you get on iOS are when you can do everything in one app. And that's why so many apps on iOS are just like gigantic really right they just try and try add every single feature possible and imaginable and because that's I where it works well storage. as soon as you're trying to do like cross application again, things it breaks down which is something that you don't really have on the mac like the mac is has a harder baseline but going from you know zero to going from using one app with a file so system to going example, using three apps with a file system the jump isn't that big whereas in ios it feels like you're doing one thing and suddenly you're doing this whole separate paradigm so Oh, so these APIs were pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> the first round of iCloud APIs devices, were pretty... He's still on FaceTime in that audience, so Jesus. The, the iCloud reliability on, on documents and iCloud stuff was very shaky. Core Data API never really worked well. The Key Value API was, like, mediocre. They later uh, re-architected everything to run off of CloudKit instead, and CloudKit is very reliable. So they're on better track now, but... Maybe my favorite one. The first re-architecture uh, after the Mobile Me architecture was still not very and successful. It's called Stream. And it's going to bring the cloud to photos. This is the photo stream thing. How many times this was obviously have like because back then you could imagine the perfect experience, which is you take a photo, you just syncs across, you edit a photo, you iPad, change your sync back. Because that's literally what you just demoed for document storage, more. right? But for photos, they the didn't have home, the server capacity at this time to iPad. actually do it properly. So they had to do this like well, that's what photo, gonna do photo stream across all of our interim devices. thing, so again, I take which would basically mean device, every time you took a picture, it, the it would get synced to a special album that will be automatically stream, uploaded to the cloud. And it would just sit there. But it was just like a copy of the picture. If you edit the picture, nothing happened. Downloaded to all my other it devices. would just sit there. And if you had, if you were on a Mac, Including you could have Mac. photos from photo stream so automatically ingest into your photo library. But obviously, there still would be no connection. Like as soon as they were copied home. across, they'd be independent files. Now, in addition, and that's what I can photo library properly solved. Right into iPhoto as an example on the Mac. It'll and obviously, you can go both ways, and it provided exactly a decent proxy. Them by pushing them down to all my other devices. So it's apps that I... It's a decent proxy for the real thing, but it, that I import. it wasn't great. And when they actually then later and had the ability to add like a photo library, right into the app. having I, photo I stream and like a photo library simultaneously was more complicated. We built this right into the app, so there's nothing new to learn. So photo stream on the iPad's photo app, we built it right in, right next to albums. And even today, I believe you can turn photo stream on and off. You push it and you're looking at the photo stream. It's kind of redundant. It's that simple. There's not a separate app that you have to go learn. It's right there in your Photos app. It's right there and the thing Photos is, app on your iPhone. It was almost like a queue to manage, because right the thing with Photo Stream is the photos wouldn't sit there forever. There you go. They didn't photo account stream. for your five gig storage, but they, that's because they weren't permanent. Like after 30 days, they get deleted. So, so you, if you were going to use Photo Stream to Mac, sync, you'd have to like on the Mac, manually right move them out of there every you so know, right seven days or whatever to make sure you didn't lose data. And on a PC, they don't have a Photos app, so we use the picture huh. folder. That was cool. So then you could do like right. your photo slideshow. In addition to that, we even built it in to Apple TV. The Apple TV UI so was Apple pretty TV, weird. Apple TV. I mean, I guess that's just you didn't do very Apple much. TV like, they didn't have directly many over the internet, so they just they could get away with just having a group five. Servers. Doesn't even go through your PC. Talks directly to the photo stream servers, so you can watch We're still photos about right stream. on your Apple TV. Like, I really want to impress the amount of time that this is taking. So, this 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 amount of, of like fastidious explanation of this entire app section, we'll you would never see that in Apple Keynote today. On your devices. Never. They're also large; they'll consume vast amounts of storage in our. Like, you can almost hear him taking breaths here, like so in a modern Keynote. With a great scheme. You're lucky We're if you get a second of silence. We're going to store photos on your devices. We're going to store the last thousand photos. 
I'm not saying one's right and one's right. wrong. It's just different. For the last thousand. Yeah. And it's just any changed. photos you want to keep permanently, just move them into an album and they'll stay forever. But they'll be parading by you. Okay, so, so they would. So, if your Mac or PC, <laughs> because we have more storage. If your we'll Mac was offline for thirty we'll days, it would never, it would never join up. We'll but if you left the Mac on, and they would the just server, all sit in photo stream. We'll whereas on iPhone, days, iPad, they would actually delete. More than okay. enough time so it wasn't as bad as like if you forgot, they would just get rid of them because they would sync to the Mac. But you still have to manage so them, right? Like, great you have to move them to your albums afterwards. And if you move them to the albums on the Mac, the albums on the iPhone wouldn't move. So that when I take a photo anywhere, I can view it. See, like now we're getting even more photo stream. Devices. Like how? <laughs> we think this is going to be How much really do you want to like hit this into our head? To demonstrate this, I've asked Eddie Q, our VP of Internet Services, to come on up and give us a demo of photo stream. Thanks, Steve. Like yep. this demo is wrong. So I want to take some photos to start with. Now I love cars, and I have. I didn't think we've seen Eddie Q on stage in a while. Here, today. Right? here it is. And. We're going to go to our and yet, my iPhone. He's one of the most influential people at Apple at the moment with you know, leading the services drive, right? Which is Lightning powering so much of their good. business. But the, like the obviously headlights. in the modern era, to address uh, criticisms about diversity now, and stuff, they've obviously now started deferring to more Let's go look at my iPad. Uh, whatever people. So, uh, you know, in the jobs era, you'd only see senior vice presidents on stage, VPs now, or senior vice presidents on stage, right? right? And very, very out. select few of so right select number of them. Whereas stream. now you get more visibility into the corporate the structure. And so for iCloud stuff, uh, you tend to get Federighi explain it. But if you have like media event stuff rather than have any queue, you get like, um, I didn't have to learn anything new you at get all. like the leaders, like and the divisions of a team plus, you get the Sony guys. And then for the TV app, you I get, just uh, select them I can't remember his surname, but it's the Peter guy and he basically runs Apple's cloud services below he's like the vp below That's eddie q it. is svp so now these photos Q doesn't really get his time to shine iPad. on stage on much anymore my devices let's move over to the same Mac. as phil schiller to be honest well, right like i don't get the impression that Schiller's going to retire in time soon you just don't see him on stage right much at the moment because you know they're always letting product managers for and individual products leave those parts I of the presentations took. rather than rather than the top dogs So now when I take a photo on so one what of was my the point devices, of that demo? Like, literally pointless. On all of my devices they could have done the demo instead of all that previous explanation, all, or they could have just had the explanation. And that's photo stream. Not required the demonstration. Thanks, buddy. That was great. And here we get, like I said before, oh, Jobs shit. does the slides, he has a demo, awesome? and then he has the reiteration. So much time dedicated so. to this. Photos you take or import. And really, this iCloud, entire iCloud section iCloud is basically the exact same thing, devices, just nine times over with different media over types. Wi -Fi. If iCloud stores each photo for 30 days, which is plenty enough time for all the devices to be connected, devices store the last thousand photos, and again, you can just drag them to an album, they stay forever. I continue to believe that Apple should photos. offer just free photo storage. like. So, yes, they're making really, money off really selling really iCloud, but I think they make money off selling iCloud for watch. everything else they do, right? Photos are just so, Last? so critical. No, you lose photos, it's just devastating. So if they, and the people don't want to pay for it, like, it's like a negative externality, right? Like, the the cost to you is way greater than what people actually want to no, pay for. It's the same old story. And so it just feels like something that Apple should just, like, right fill the bill for. Even if they just I roll it into the price of their devices, like, if they, if they just made... The amount of components in their I modern phones, ten pound cheaper, that can basically device. pay for iCloud for the lifetime of that device, and right? And they could offer that. But instead, they make you pay ninety nine cents a month, well, two ninety nine a month. Done again is for the songs you've already bought, it just feels bad, right? Like we've added a purchase button that shows you your entire. Purchase it just feels like photo storage should be free. ITunes songs you it should just be part of the device. cost of the phone. It shouldn't be an end on purchase. Songs, they can they can do subscriptions with basically everything else, and I wouldn't really care. But photo so storage is just so critical. Here, and I could download any of these albums. And on I Android, you basically do get free photo storage. Device, like you, it's down. You don't get full quality button. resolution, but it's close enough. And most so people will never in notice in the difference between the down res version and the normal version. Like it's not like super compressed. It's just slightly not as good as the real as the true originals. 
I can now download if Apple wanted to offer a thing where they de they did that, where no they you know they save non-originals, which is great. I'd accept that, but that doesn't really sound like an Apple thing to do. They they want to make sure that it's originals only, like the original quality of pictures. So they just kind of have to like industry. stomach it. No charge for multiple downloads. To if they're not going to up base iCloud from five, and for the future, they need to make photo storage an exception. One switch to on, and now. Any song I buy on any device... This is iTunes in the again, cloud, right? So this is literally the app store purchases in the cloud just repeated devices. again for music so instead. And we're getting song, another demo of this. Adele song, it will push it to all of my devices. And then I'm so trying to remember what the last one is. Is the last one... His like iTunes match. I think that might, hey, that might be one more thing, actually. Thanks, Steve. So how do we find so music that we already iPhone, purchased? Shockingly, we go to, to the iTunes Music Store and we click on the purchase iTunes, button. But it's not in the music library on this device. Well, now I can easily just go to the iTunes Music Store. There's a new purchase tab right on the bottom. And now I'm seeing all of the purchases I've ever done on iTunes. Now, obviously, this problem has gone away in the iTunes subscriptions because of Apple Music. You can listen to any song in the world. You don't have to care what you purchase. That I had, that are not on but this is pretty nice. That I previously purchased. Just Although there was button. a problem when before Apple Music, now, we would rely on iTunes and the cloud stuff, walk. and it was just hard sometimes. Like you couldn't, you could only download songs individually. That's why there was some problem where you couldn't like just download. Let's like, say you you got a new device, your your, uh, and you and wanted to just is. put everything on there, and it would be like I'd buy the, the music, and then my brother would want all the music. You couldn't do that. You could buy, you could download in like batches of albums or batches of songs. You couldn't like do everything all at once. Which I think was probably on purpose because the music labels didn't really like it, and that was kind of the compromise. But that was the that was Let's the state of play. Downloading. So this is all manual downloads, which we already explained three times now. Because this is a different media type, we now have another great, presentation about. The cloud is even better. Let's see what happens when I purchase a new song. So you know when people will say like iPad, the keynotes were never the same. Like this part of the thing 5. is something I don't miss. Like it's so slow. And on my iPhone, I'm going to go back to the iTunes it's store. So I want to buy a new song. And I want to look at uh, Bruno like, Mars. You know, new album. Out, I know you're never going to beat the song, charisma of Jobs, called, but uh, lazy, lazy song. there were That's definitely it. elements of his presentation style that feel pretty outdated. I don't have any problem. The music app, by the way, that was the best version of the iPad, of the iPad music app. They absolutely it. gutted Before it with I 7. Do, notice on Terrible, my iPad, and it's still pretty bad to this day. Songs at all. So we're going to go ahead and buy. And it's now downloading to my and like, iPhone. And in yes, addition, it's designed to look like a jukebox with like the little wood grain at the sides. Just get rid of the wood grain. You do a perfectly reasonable application. It's just like for nice gray hues. And of course, let's play. That has like proper layout of albums and stuff. So now, when I buy a song on one of my devices, it automatically downloads to all of my devices without having to sync or do any work at all. And okay. that's iTunes in the cloud. Thanks. Thanks. And now we get the recap of that section again. All I'm looking at there is the app icon, because back in those days, that would be how you'd put a circle in that rounded rectangle. Since I was seven, everything's much more zoomed up and enlarged, like the, the circumference of the circle is much closer to the edges. And that was very controversial when I was seven was first released, but I think people kind of got accustomed to it. iTunes in the cloud. So these nine apps constitute iCloud, and they are all Free. <laughs> we want, but you do have we want every plan. user to take advantage of these, and we know if we make them free that they'll they will. And uh, we want people to see what these devices can really do. Wait, do they really not discuss the storage plans here? So we're making it free, and we're very excited about it. Because obviously, <laughs> so that's that iCloud. was definitely a thing. Like if your iCloud backup was it bigger than five gig, you had to pay more. And wirelessly pushes it to all your devices. And, it's and now, obviously, it maxes out at apps. two terabytes, but so back then it was maxed out at like 100 matters. gigs. So a competitor that doesn't. Did Jobs really not mention the storage plan? Maybe he was trying to, like. Great developers he, to he just wanted to impress apps. on the free pricing, so he this. did his classic, like, let's just they pretend the other stuff doesn't exist. So it just works. 
and that's what we've done here. So how do you get it? Well, this exp setup experience basically exists like phone or the same to this day, obviously just with not all in. All you have to do is type it's in your Apple ID and password, it's basically the same. and that's it. And you'll go to switch. Okay, maybe here's where we're talking about. iCloud, you can turn it off if you'd like. It'll be turned on by default, and you're up and running. <laughs> we're also going to give everybody five gigabytes of free storage. See, maybe back in 2011, five gigs was really generous, but 2020, no way. And that's even more than it sounds no like. 2015, no way. Because we're not counting purchase music, apps, or books towards that five gigabytes. <laughs> no more. Nor are we counting. So he still doesn't mention the storage plan. Towards okay. that five gigabytes. So, when can you get your hands on this? Today. Maybe they hadn't finalized pricing yet. Developer beta today. We're going to get you all a developer beta today. And also today, we're going to make something available to end users, which is the iTunes in the cloud portion. And it runs on iOS 4.3. It'll run on Bit all random, the support okay. platforms when we ship it this fall. But today, we're going to put it out for 4.3 as a beta, and everyone can get their hands on it and run it on their existing, uh, existing iPhone 4s. So we think this is going to be really exciting. Sadly, he would not And of course, we ship iCloud happen. concurrent with shipping iOS 5 this fall. So that is iCloud. <laughs> okay, this is iTunes map. Now there's one more thing. No, nothing. See, thing. iTunes map was a good deal. It pertains to iTunes in the cloud. As you recall, iTunes in the cloud is just for the music like, that you've purchased. It basically let everyone. Store. Now at 14 billion songs, like they're gonna they're gonna present it as the CDs that you collected, but a lot of stuff was obviously pirated. Store, but so you may have some. You could basically legalize your entire music yourself. collection for like twenty dollars. And there's three ways you can deal with that. One, you can sync your new devices over Wi-Fi or cable or cable, and you only have to sync them once just to get that music on them, and then you can rely on iCloud to take care of getting all your new purchases off iTunes onto that device. Or if it's just a few songs you love that you don't want to leave behind, you can buy those songs that you'll miss on iTunes. We're going to like offer a third way. Like the thing with iTunes Match was iTunes you didn't, Match. it was a subscription, what is like iTunes it was Match? 20, 25 dollars a year. Well, iTunes Match but uses the fact when you ripped the music, when you sync the music once to iCloud to iTunes Match, it would remove all the DRM. And, the chances and you'd get dear and free songs. So you only actually had to do it once, right? Like if you didn't, if you had an existing year. collection of music, and so you never, and, you, and all future stuff you bought through CDs, iTunes, you'd only actually have to run so iTunes CD, Match a single time. -iTunes music, and so you could basically legalize an unlimited so amount of music for one price. Right? And so we can get and that I, th music I think what was happening here was that from Google was already offering a music service minutes, and they didn't have you any have deals with labels. So what they would do is literally just time. upload now, literally takes weeks. your entire music library. This takes so minutes. if you had a 5 gig music library, it would upgrade, it would upload the, the full 5 gig library, so 10 gig library, 10 gig library. Whereas what Apple did is they pursued the deals with the, remain, with the music labels well, we'll so that it would let them do this um, scan and match but stuff. So most to have they would match the songs and then just put an, on your account like a note that, oh, okay, you do own this song, but you wouldn't have to upload the physical file. So it would be a lot faster. Addition, Whereas Google's approach is basically just like brute force upload your entire files and they would store separate because of the licensing. They would store the same files. So, like, if I had one a Taylor Swift song and you had a Taylor Swift song, and we used the Google servers on and their servers, they would be storing two copies of the same file because that was how so they got around got the, the licensing problem. Whereas Apple got these deals, if you've got a bunch which meant that, that you didn't buy they could just put like a metadata on the account. Of okay, all of these people own this same song, so it saved them money because they didn't have to have massive file storage. Uh, but it was also convenient for the user because you could scan and match. Here we go in minutes. Whereas, okay, Amazon obviously must have done done Amazon Music 
type of thing at the same time. Again, the so library and the cloud he's comparing to Amazon and Google, and both Amazon and Google didn't have the, the deals, whereas Apple had the deals. And so they yeah, had a better, like better experience there. You do have the problem where if the matching goes Using wrong, apps, then if you if the service matches well, it to the wrong device. song, or what happened a lot of the time was like, you'd upload the live version and, and it would match as just like the seven. studio release. The so you'd actually only own the studio all. release. And if you weren't careful, it would delete the wrong the songs. And there was a big brouhaha about that for a while. Where it was pretty aggressive Amazon and just replacing the music. So if you had versions that you wanted to keep, it would actually get destroyed. Even and so here's, okay, so Apple's service is $25, whereas Amazon's up the Amazon and Google models were basically just like buying Google file storage, so it would scale with the amount of songs that you owned. So, so about $50, 200 and who knows what people are charging. But Apple didn't have to do that because they were only uploading the songs that were truly unique. Like everything that was actually in iTunes would just upload as metadata only, so like tiny kilobytes. Uh, and obviously as soon as Apple did iTunes match, Amazon and Google went straight back to the labels and renegotiated so and match. got the same arrangement. So Apple's advantage here didn't it last very long, maybe like a year. And then everyone else is basically offering homogenous services. Now, and then, you know, I'd say two or three years later, Spotify started to become very dominant and then eventually Apple called it on and did Apple Music in 2015. If you don't think we're serious about And so this final closing bit about showing this data center, this is trying to re-emphasize that they are actually taking it serious this time, right? It's back to the mobile me joke. It's like diffusing the situation. It's trying to put a line under the previous catastrophes of Apple's cloud services. And I think for the most part, iCloud has held up. Like modern iCloud with iCloud photos, I've never had a problem with it. I've never really had data loss with iCloud. I've never had a massive catastrophe. I've Just even been using the new iCloud shared folder size. stuff recently, and that's been fine. See those two little dots on the roof? Those are two people right there. <laughs> like, so it's a pretty large place, and the biggest problem with iCloud at the moment is just the the photo situation, where photo storage costs a fortune stuff. for regular people, yeah. and they don't want to do it. And uh, like, I drill ready? into my family's heads, and they still don't want to we do it. I like pay for, for like uh, half my family's for iCloud stuff just because I know they won't do it on their own. And we can't wait to get it in their hands. So that's something so that I really hope Apple source out. Is the third Charge me for something else, just give photo storage away for free. Like, I hope you like it's too critical, all of the, too essential. The three things that we've unveiled this morning. And again, we've got a great week planned And this for is you. the roundup for uh, with, physical uh, WWDC, which obviously we, won't, we aren't getting this year in 2020 because of the pandemic. And so that will be very interesting to see as well. Hands on lab, and this year that starts on the 22nd of June. It's going to be different. It's not going to be the perfect stage presentation that we're used to, but I can't wait to see what they've got for us with iOS 14, WatchOS 7, and the like. Have a great week, and thank you very much for coming this morning.